Okay, this is Cthulhu Dark, the History of Mercy Falls, session four, the final session of History of Mercy Falls. So we are in 1989 in the logging town of Mercy Falls, logging slash resort town, actually, at this point. And I think Twin Peaks, and you're right there <laughs> with where I need you to be in terms of headspace. The basic mystery here that's going on in 1989 is a number of people have started to go missing over the last uh, four or five months, about maybe a dozen people in total. The authorities are not doing a good job of investigating this. Um, this is a combination of incompetence and also just a sort of like shrug because people go missing in Mercy Falls historically all the time and it's a lot of weird things happen um, and it's just kind of a, you know, like people expect like people just to like kind of pack up and leave sometimes. It's that kind of town. So our investigators are people who have decided to take the investigation into their own hands and try to figure out what's going on. They each have someone connected to them that has gone missing, and we're gonna meet them now. Um, at the outset, the first scene is going to be you all meeting at the Double Q Diner, which is not quite on the main drag of town. It's a little bit outside of town, like it's one of the first things you'd hit if you were coming in off the highway. Um, but I think one of you uh, posted like a little classified somewhere and said, hey, let's do want to get together and talk about this stuff, right? And so I think the three of you are all responding to that or two of you are responding to it. One of you actually posted it and you're just talking about the people who were missing in your lives and what you're going to do about it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. Let's meet those characters. So uh, Kevin, please tell us about Allison Wilson. <clears throat> Allison Wilson's a native of Mercy Falls. Uh, she's only 22. Um, she had gone off to college, dropped out, came back, uh, and she's working as a bartender at uh, the uh, uh, bar and grill that's in the local uh, resort. And she has a roommate, Cassandra Hansen, who's only 18, uh, she had graduated from high school and she's just working as a waitress uh, at a different restaurant in town. And Cassandra disappeared a couple days ago. And when Allie talked to the cops about it, they're kind of like, well, you know, people come, they go, she's young, you know, had no signs of violence. Well, maybe we'll look at it. And so she's freaked out because uh, while she's young, Cassandra's never been unreliable before. Okay, good. So I think we're going to call that resort uh, the Great Pine Resort. And Cassandra, that's great because because she went missing a couple days ago. Cassandra sounds like she's probably our closest connection to what might be going on, right? Um, in terms of like immediacy, you know. Um, so that's good. Uh, awesome. I don't have any other questions uh, for now about. Um, Allison. Do you prefer Allison or Allie? I see Allie written down there. Uh, typically, people call her Allie. Okay. All right. Um, I don't have any other questions. Uh, do either of you guys have any questions about Allie before we get going? No. All right. Then in that case, Donna, please tell us about Frank McAllister. <clears throat> um, Frank McAllister is um, a surveying guy with the logging company or one of them. Uh, he's a payroll guy. He, so he works for the company. He's not an independent operator or anything like that. He's been in town, I don't know, four or five years. He's from this region, but not from the town. So he's he kind of acts local, and most people probably assume he's local unless they really know uh, the town's history. Um, his friend, Jamie, who is a paralegal, um, who you would know through work, I don't know, pro um, prospecting claims and... All, all this kind of stuff. Um, Tracing title and all that stuff. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all that kind of stuff. But they they drink. Maybe they drink at Ali's place. Uh, so they're just friends outside of work. And he went missing a few weeks ago. Um, the police response was kind of underwhelming. You know, loner, no family. Um, Frank knows that he was del that Jamie was delivering documents. And that those documents got delivered, and then we never heard from Jamie again. Um, but I guess he would have been driving up country. It wasn't like 
he just upped out of the office and left. He, he was going somewhere relatively remote. So it doesn't make any sense. You know, um, people are surprising, but not that surprising to Frank. Yeah, perfect. Um, about how old is Frank? Uh, Mid thirties, maybe. Okay, great. Um, I think I'm good for now. Any other questions about Frank? No. Awesome. All right, Chris, tell us about Benny Wilcox, please. Uh, Benny is a security guard. He's uh, just out of high school, or not just out of high school. He's in his early twenties, like twenty-two or so. Um, he just started doing security guard like a year ago. Uh, nothing fancy. Just went through the basic courses and makes minimum wage. Um, and his aunt Sylvia uh, always lived in. Um, sorry, in this place for some reason, my brain is f f uh, farting on the name. Um, <laughs> Right, yes, yes. Um, and uh, he used to visit her all the time. He's from Portland, Oregon. He used to visit her all the time growing up, and he, she just like stopped answering her phone, and uh, no one's really heard from her. And being a lawyer, she's, you know, at least someone who should ostensibly be easy to gotten a hold of. So he, I think he probably responded to someone else's message and and came up here to take matters into his own hands. Awesome, I love it. So we have like three layers of connection to Mercy Falls here. Then Ali is like super local. Um, Frank is regional, <laughs> I guess, like familiar with Mercy Falls, but not from there. And the, and Benny is the least familiar with Mercy Falls. Although you yeah. do, you did visit, presumably visit your aunt here at some point, like yeah. uh, growing up. Good. Um, I love it. Uh, oh, and I like, <laughs> I love that he looks like David Arquette, actually. I see your little, little <laughs> thing there. I, I was basing him off of uh, that character from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, um, I always, um, I was thinking of uh, David Arquette in, uh, in Scream, you know, like when he's the sheriff's deputy. But, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> I don't know why that occurred to me. I love it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, I love it. I don't have any other questions about Benny at this time. So let's just start about, let's just start with the setup. Who of the three of you would have posted this like notice, this ad or whatever, maybe in the paper or something like that, somewhere where um, maybe, maybe like in some kind of like, yeah, in this in this time period, it would be like a sort of confidential, like classified listing, right, of some sort. Uh, who do we think did that of you? Three. I think it might be Ali, just because uh, it was so recently that Cassandra disappeared, and yeah. she's frankly kind of pissed off at the total lack of caring by the cops. Right, yeah. And she's heard these stories, and she's like, you know, hey. If no one else is going to do something about this, maybe we can at least, if nothing else, be a support group for each other, right? Yeah, I love it. And so I think um, I think maybe you, the three of you, have talked on the phone briefly just to like kind of set up where you were going to meet, um, which is at the Double Q Diner. Um, and we're going to just pick up with that scene um, with the three of you in a booth at the Double Q. Uh, one thing I, I'd like to just paint the scene about the Double Q really quickly. The Double Q is it leans really it leans in really hard into a sort of like retro 1950s aesthetic you know um as you kind of go into the double queue like what do you each see that that really like emphasizes this that like they're going for a blast from the past kind of diner experience um whoever wants to jump in there uh, the waitress is all wearing poodle skirts. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> um, and one of the waitresses, uh, one of the waitresses, uh, probably Allie, you'll know her best, is a, uh, she's a girl just out of high school. Her name is Norma. And she has, uh, she's worked there all through high school. And she's really well known, very popular girl in school. Um, and she's there right now. Uh, Frank, what do you see? That, the, what, what 50s kit? <laughs> I think they've got like a real old fashioned jukebox, you know, with mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, with singles, actual pressed vinyl singles. Uh, and you've got to rack up your quarter to get your song. Nice. Who's um, playing when you walk in? There's, uh, I don't know, uh, 1950s. So I think maybe some classic Elvis, right? Perfect. Yeah. Love that. Uh, cool. Allie, what about you? Um, when, uh, one of the first things you see when you walk in is it's got neon all around the top and it's that kind of 
like pink and that weird sea foam green mm, going yeah. around. And then it's got all the chrome stools and uh, with the vinyl coverings uh, also. Love it, love it. So you're all there. Um, maybe we'll say it's like late morning, like around 9, 9 a.m., 10 a.m. Uh, Norma will come by and, you know, refresh your coffee, uh, which sounds really good right now as I say the word. And, um, and see if you want anything to eat, that kind of thing. But the three of you are there. Uh, let's just have that scene and we'll kind of decide where we go from there after we have the scene. Role play. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, guys. Uh, so which one of you, which one of you two set this up? Uh, it was Allie. Oh, I was asking in character. Sorry. In character. Oh, <laughs> oh, I thought because you talked on the phone, you already knew that. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah. Nah. Right. So, and I'm the only female here. So, true. Let's roll back. Uh, wow. Uh, so, it, it's good to see you guys uh, in person here. Um, okay. Appreciate you being willing to come out. I feel kind of strange doing this but i didn't know what else to do i talked to sheriff and he's just like whatever yeah they seem full of i don't know what to call it they i don't know whether they really don't care or whether they just are blind it just um, like they accept it like they just like let this kind of crap happen yeah, I totally got the, did you get the, oh, people disappear all the time. They're just probably, you know, people come, they go, did they pull that line on you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like my aunt's just going to up and leave her, uh, <clears throat> leave her freaking practice, right? Right now, uh, who was it? Who's your aunt again? Sylvia. Uh, yeah, lawyers don't typically just pull up stakes and disappear in the middle of the night. That's what I'm saying. Just like my friend, you know, my, my roommate, um, Cassandra, you know, she just got out of high school last spring and she's been waitressing ever since. And like, where is she going to go? She wasn't dating anyone. It's crazy, man. Yeah. My, my friend Jamie is like, I don't know, he's a bit older than me, like early 40s, mid 40s. I'm not sure. Um, works as a paralegal. I don't know if he knows your aunt even, or if, if they work at the same firm, but um, I mean, okay, he didn't have, you know, family up here, but you know, he was making a living. Didn't seem into any crazy stuff, but uh, um, yeah, I don't buy, I mean, one person pulling up stakes and leaving for no reason, sure. Um, but uh Three. Seems it's not even three, too much right? To be I mean, a coincidence. Well, it's it's probably like more than three, right? Yeah, it seems uh, like it's happening to everybody. Yeah. Well, so then I guess I'll jump in here and just say, like, what do you guys think your first steps are going to be? I mean, who would propose the first first action here, the first thing to go do? Um, we should go talk to talk to someone, talk to the last people that saw him, other than other than you, right? Um, well, I mean, b before I read the, read the ad, I was thinking of going up, um, where, where Jamie was making that document delivery and taking a look around see if I spot anything unusual. Uh, I mean, other than like actually doing some detective work and digging up some evidence that none of our friends have been doing anything with their credit cards or something, I don't know. We can't go to the police. They've already told us to yeah take a hike yeah. they wouldn't even take a report from me um so how long ago did your friend jamie disappear frank uh, it's a couple of couple of weeks a couple of weeks and how yeah. long ago was it that your aunt disappeared benny uh about a month huh yeah i know i didn't see anything about those in the newspaper or anything you know I did you guys what, talk one detail? To one detail I'll give you guys just okay. so you guys yep. know. You guys are already kind of like leaning into it, which is good. But 
there's no like hard evidence of their disappearance, right? Uh, as best anyone knows, they could have just packed up and left, right? So, um, although many of them did not pack up, <laughs> all their stuff was right. Up, so, <laughs> but there was no violence or anything like that. So. Right, right. Yeah, like I came home from my shift, went to bed, and she just never came back. Sandra just, just never, yeah. never showed up again. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, with with me, I guess. I mean, I don't, I don't see Jamie every day. Uh, I was probably going to meet him a few days later for a drink and he didn't show up and I gave him a call or, or I probably just texted him, didn't hear back. So it was probably a week after I knew he was gone. Um, and like with your aunt, you're, are you living in town? Or are you out of town? No, uh, I live down in Portland. Okay. So maybe someone just, I mean, it's kind of terrible to think if someone's a bit of a loner and someone has this town's no totally family in like town. And, yeah. You know what, though? So did you guys all work with the sheriff? Because I spoke directly with the sheriff. I'm wondering if maybe should talk to someone else at the station. Oh, maybe one of the like lower cops knows what's going on and... Yeah, well, yeah, or be, be willing to talk to us at yeah. least. Like, you know, one of the deputies, there's, there's a few uh, younger guys there, or, you know, maybe we could talk to the um, switchboard operator who takes the calls coming in and just find out, like, how much this happens. Yeah, I like that. Because I walked into the office, and I guess I would talk to the receptionist, and as soon as she heard that it was someone missing, she said, well, you better talk to the sheriff. I didn't think of anything at the time, but maybe we'd, we'd try to grab a deputy on his lunch break or something like that. If the sheriff knows more than he's letting on, we don't want to tip our hand. We don't want to go through the, the, the switchboard and say, hey, how, how many disappearances have you had? Maybe we talk to someone on the side. So it sounds like what I'm hearing is go talk to a sheriff's deputy, um, go possibly go look into wherever Jamie was delivering documents to. And um, we'll just say for now that none of you have also, like none of you have actually looked at the personal effects of any of the missing people either. Okay. So that's still available as well. So sure, I'll just put it on the table. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, my idea is that like I'm I'm still in uh, uniform because I literally like got off work and drove up here. <laughs> nice, I love it. Yeah, you look official, right? Even, yeah, right. Yeah, unless you look right. real carefully and see it's like some security company, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, good. Well, so let's just let's just go around the table and find out what everyone's next move is here. Then uh, all those sound like great ideas, um, Frank. What do you think? Um, so. If one of the others doesn't mind walking in to grab a deputy, uh, I might take a trip up to the the hills to um, to try to track down Jamie's kind of last last job. Cool, um, Ali. What about you? I would love to go over to the sheriff's office and talk to someone else on staff, and if it's a guy, who knows. Uh, Maybe I'll be one of the regulars that comes in at the resort and yeah. I can kind of cozy up with him a bit. Get Sounds good. Uh, and what about you, Benny? Um, yeah, I think uh, since I'm not as familiar with the town and I haven't seen her in a while, I think I'll go to my aunt's place and uh, snoop around, see if I can find any any details. I love it. Uh, let's start there. So your aunt's a lawyer in Mercy Falls, right? And... Um, was she was she doing well? Like, was she a wealthy lawyer, or was she kind of like uh, like? I think travel? probably like doing well for a town this size. Like, sure. yeah, like you know, she's middle class for sure. Okay. Um, just for ease of the scene, we'll just say that she was uh, um, she had no like husband or kids or anything. Okay. Um, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, you pull up to her house. Um, I'll just assume you have keys or you can just break in. It's not a big deal. Uh, I, yeah, uh, I was actually thinking I'd walk up, try the front door and then sort of like snoop around the back and, and yeah, yeah. break in. I think that's good. Um, you go up. Uh, the 
it is locked at the front, as you would expect. Um, whenever she went missing, she she must not have gone missing from the house, right? I mean, it, it, she it's a little unclear like how, what the circumstances were of her going missing, but it's locked up front. Uh, you could move around to the back. Um, I think what we've described in the past in this series is that like people's houses like aren't right next to each other, you know. Uh -huh. um, you have to kind of go up, you know, in the hills a ways, and then like so everyone's like kind of isolated. Sometimes you have like little strips of houses of three or four, but mostly houses are kind of by themselves. So there's no real danger here. Um, you can break in, and like no one will know, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So, um, so you get inside. Where where do you begin? What do you do? Um, I'll start in the living room. Look for like maybe uh, when the last newspaper was like if there's a newspaper in the on the table or something like see when the last date was oh yeah that's good um go ahead and uh give me a roll so let's do the dice here so the way this works is you're gonna you roll one die no matter what you get another die if this is within your occupational expertise and you can um make a case for that if you think it is uh and then you can risk your insanity die um you always win. There is no losing on the dice. Um, as long it's just basically what's at stake is how much information you gain, right? Okay. Or what the its degree of success, right? If it's a particularly interesting or dramatic moment, and one of us, including myself, wants to see you fail <laughs> um, or thinks it would be interesting to see you fail, then we can roll against you. But for this low level stuff, it's not common. Okay. Typically, rolls against other characters will happen um, like, you know, when you're facing down cultists or whatever, right? Right. So, uh, so definitely one die. What do you think about the second die? Does this sound like security guard work? No, no. So I, I chose security guard because I was a security guard and uh, <laughs> I was very low in security guard and there's no detective training involved. So, <laughs> okay, good. So, I, 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 I kind of see myself a little, actually the scream reference is, is good because I kind of see myself as a little bit bumbling. So yeah, well, like good. thinks he's better than he is. So I'll just do the one die. So just uh, 1d6 submit. Yeah, but, yeah, just roll d6 and then hit submit. And five. Five, that's a great result. That's the best result you can get really because a six um, forces you to get a, a test your sanity basically oh, okay. six, because you learn you learn a lot but it also is, is dangerous sure. um great let me take a look at my notes and find out what you might find yeah newspapers um you're looking for newspapers and in fact um in fact your aunt sylvia just happened to be looking at one uh, apparently right before she went missing dated kind of old though maybe like six months ago okay oh wow and but whatever it was you it's conveniently opened right to like the interesting article right <laughs> and the article talks about the arrival of a biker gang in mercy falls a biker gang called the hounds of the moon um and that uh basically the, the 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 thrust of the newspaper report is that they've been having like scuffles with local loggers like there are like logging camps you know like where the men stay like when they're on a job and this biker gang has been kind of like you know kind of like getting in fights with them and you know having like territorial disputes and things like that with them right um it's unclear if they're still around but uh for whatever reason your aunt sylvia was really interested in this <laughs> um, or at least Interested enough to like find an old newspaper, <laughs> right, and and have a look. So, um, anything else after you get that? Um, I would do a general search of the house just see if anything's been obviously knocked over, if there's a pool of blood or anything. Um, sure, sure. But it's not like there's any, you know, there's no computer to check really. So, right, um, yeah. uh, kind of just look for anything obviously out of the ordinary, um, and otherwise uh, probably head to head out give me one more die roll and i'll kind of and i'll kind of it, it, i'll kind of deepen the, the 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 notion of like what happened to aunt sylvia depending on the die roll like in terms of okay. how she disappeared uh three okay that's pretty good so basically what you're going to learn is more or less what we already know out of character but you're going to know it for sure in character now which is aunt sylvia just went somewhere and never came back there's no sign of like she didn't pack anything up she didn't, um, there's no sign of a struggle, nothing like that, okay? No sign of packing is interesting, though. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, super interesting, right? Like, she didn't, like, plan to go somewhere. So, um, 
Awesome. In fact, I'll ask you one question just to just to make this interesting. What is something that if your Aunt Sylvia was going to go somewhere for a while, she would definitely take with her? Like, you know, she would definitely take it and she didn't take it. Um, she would definitely take her uh, cell phone. There's cell phones right now, right? Like the big, bulky yeah, big, ones. big giant ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, big like satellite but, but phones. But nothing yeah. that you can garner any actual information on because it's not like there are contacts lists and stuff. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. I love it. Yeah, it's just sitting there on the table. She was probably really proud of it when she bought it, right? Like it was, oh, sure, it was one of those sure. like, status things. Like, look at this. You know. So <laughs> awesome. Just like Zach. On... <laughs> right. Exactly. <yeah. laughs> I'm gonna cut over to Allie. Allie, you were heading over to the sheriff's department, right? Yes, that's correct. <clears throat> Who are you looking for? Uh, let's say it's Deputy Andy, because I picture him kind of like, ah, shucks. Sure, you know, yeah. yeah, like kind of naive. His heart is obviously in the right place always. He really likes to help people. I figure he, well, he's a soft touch. He's the least likely to just to blow me off he might not tell me anything but if he doesn't he'll at least be nice about it yeah yeah, that's good um all right so you get to the sheriff's department um you know there the county sheriff's office it's 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 just outside of town as well um mm -hmm. and there's a i wouldn't say a regular stream of like you know sheriff's vehicles you know or sheriff's department vehicles coming in and out there's probably just like maybe two, three sheriffs, uh, deputies total, and then plus the sheriff himself. Yep. Uh, Deputy Handy's there, and he's, um, I think he's just right there when you walk in. He's like, he's like, hey, Allie, long time no see. Yeah, you'd need to come by uh, the Great Pine more often. Kind of miss seeing you there for, you know, a snack and a drink. He's like, you know, just staying busy, you know? There's so much. It's a, it's a lot of land, a lot of trees, a lot of people, yeah. and I'm spread pretty thin, but I'll try to get over there next time I can. Yeah, that'd be great. Say, uh, can I talk to you for a bit, Andy? Uh, sure, I'm sure, sure. yeah. yeah. Um, oh, Andy, I thought you said Andy. <laughs> That's his last name, uh, Andy. He says, yeah, of course, of course. Um, what's up? You want some coffee? Oh, that'd be great. Always use more coffee. He goes and gets you. I could too. He goes and gets you some coffee, and um, uh, you know, you guys are, you know, maybe you're just got pleasantry shooting the shit for a minute or whatever. Yep. Um, make your move. So, Andy, uh, I don't know if you've heard, but you know, my roommate uh, uh, Cassandra, you know, she works over at the Double Q sometimes. Um, but she's been gone for a couple of days. I talked to the sheriff and he just kind of like blew me off. And I was just wondering, you know, can I at least ask you to keep an eye out? See if any, if you see anything, let me know. Cause I, I swear when I talked to him on the phone, I could tell he wasn't even writing anything down. It, I'm worried about her. I mean, she's only 18 and such a sweet kid. I, you know, it's not like her to just not show up for a couple of days. Uh, give me the die roll. See how it goes. Excuse me. Uh, uh, is this maybe make so a case for two, possibly? Yeah, I'm going to say that it's two because it's humanly possible and and Allie's cute. And get, when getting people to open up is kind of a yeah. bartender thing, right? Yep, yeah. very much. Mm -hmm. Oops, I need to clear this. I didn't see that the dice were there already. So a three. You want to risk sanity? Try to get a better result? Sure, why not? Okay, roll the pips. Yeah. Nope. All right. So the, because the sanity die was higher than one other die on the roll, yep. um, you're going to have to roll insanity here in a minute. Uh, okay. And you're getting a three, which is like... Yeah. Yeah. Um, he says, <clears throat> well, I mean, Allie, uh, you know, P 
people go missing from Mercy Falls all the time. You know that. This is a weird town. I'm going to lean in close and put my hand on his chest. I'm like, but Andy, I mean, this is Cassandra we're talking about. It's not like some logger who can just go pick up a job somewhere else. She doesn't even have a car. Where's she going to go? It's not like we have midnight bus service here. Um, as you're talking to him, uh, his nose begins to bleed a little bit. Um, oh, Han, you, you're bleeding a bit there. He's like, he's like, oh, he like, he kind of, he's got like, like a, maybe a little, uh, you know, a little picture frame that he can kind of see his reflection in. And he kind of, he's like, oh, he's like, that's been happening a lot lately. He kind of like, he's like, I think it's the dry air. That's what my mother says anyway. This is. This is the Pacific Northwest. It's not that dry, Andy. I think if that's going on, you should see a doctor. He's like, well, I don't know. You know, our benefits aren't that great. And anyway, <clears throat> Allie, uh, here's the thing. All right. He kind of leans in kind of close. He says, we're kind of, we're kind of on to something, okay? We're kind of onto something and we think there might be kind of a connection, but we don't know for sure. All right. We don't know for sure. But well, because I've got friends who they've got people who are missing too. He's like, <clears throat> don't tell Sheriff I told you this, but right around the time that people started going missing, that's when all the trees started to die up north ways. And this is something you may have heard about tangentially. Uh, basically, a bunch of like trees have been just like dying and like rotting away uh, a little ways up north, up, up the up the mountain, right, or kind of up in the hills. And uh, that's something that that's almost certainly something that Frank might know about, right? Um, and he says it's the weirdest damn thing. And the sheriff is he's got a lot of people like like up up his ass about it, and he doesn't know what's going on. None of us know what's going on. We just know trees are dying and people are missing, and. Well, when weird things start happening in, in Mercy Falls at the same time, you better bet they're connected. And then he just says, and then like as he's saying this, his nose continues to bleed, like really like at a rapid pace and he doesn't even notice it. Like there's I'm just gonna blood. reach into my purse and pull out a handkerchief and hand it to him. I'm like, well, you're really gushing there, Andy. By the time you get the handkerchief to him, the blood is like running out of his nose and like dribbling into his mouth and he does not notice it. Um, that's where your sanity roll is coming from. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, six. Going up. How does it make you feel, this like strange gusher of blood coming out of Andy's nose that he, he doesn't even, even notice? Even until more than that, it's the him. lack of affect yeah. Uh, around it that's freaking me out and I hand him the the handkerchief and he just kind of only sort of half-heartedly screams yeah. at us like no big so deal. He's just a smudge of blood on his face. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I'm just like backing away and like okay Andy well thanks for talking to me and I, I promise I won't say anything about that and you should really get that looked at okay bye <laughs> good frank you're you know you have an address um of where jamie was going and you said he disappeared about what like you said a few weeks ago uh, like two weeks, weeks ago, ago yeah two weeks ago okay so you have an address and it is a postal road um pretty not far outside of town but not close like you definitely have to like get in your car it's probably a few miles outside of town okay and um a little house uh with a postal road address um you pull up to like a little dirt path you know uh, it's kind of a sort of open little area little dirt path that kind of goes in between a between a copse of trees you can see what appears to be just like a little cabin in the woods cabin in the woods that's not ominous right <laughs> um so yeah I, I think i'm just gonna go very straightforwardly at this um 
I just knock on the door. What do you look like? And, um, I think uh, Frank is kind of, um, he's got a beard. He's kind of looks like he's an outdoorsy guy. He spends a lot of his time in the hills, um, kind of thin, um, probably too thin. Mm -hmm. uh, people probably see him eating in the in uh, you know food and wonder where it all goes you know uh, kind of um, a lot of energy when he's up on the job but uh, in town not really um, so he looks you know not dissimilar from a lot of the loggers though a lot less muscle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good uh, great. You knock on the door. Do you knock on the door or what's your? Yeah, sorry, I, I knock on the door. Okay. And like a real outdoorsy type knock, you know, not <laughs> <laughs> a manly yeah. knock. Um, yeah, yeah. Fine, virile, masculine knock on the door. Um, there is. It's really funny. Like, you don't, you know, normally like you can kind of hear people moving to the door, you know, like from the outside, like you can hear getting up off furniture or footsteps, right, as they approach. None of that. Um, the door just opens and surprises you like you weren't like, like they were just standing right there on the other side of the door. And it's a man who is, um, he you're he he doesn't even he doesn't even fit in the door frame he's so big um he's pretty tall i'd say about six and a half feet tall easy um really wide at the shoulder wearing a really delicate um pale canary yellow suit with a bolo tie and uh, and a cowboy hat the cowboy hat pushes him to the seven foot range okay and um old um red, red skin, um, splotchy, jowly, right? Um, he's, he's big, big guy, muscle and fat, right? And we'll get to that scene in a minute. Let's just quick, take a quick break. I'm gonna refresh my coffee and we'll come back, okay? Let's just take like two minutes.
Uh, Chris, are you there? Yes, I am. I do intend to get a uh, webcam soon, but I don't yeah, have one fine. right now. We have a lot of players who don't go on camera, so that's no big deal. Yes, can I help you? Um, this may seem like a, a strange uh, request, but a friend of mine came up here a few weeks back. Uh, he works with a, a legal office in town. Um, I'm wondering, do you remember him calling? Uh, Jamie is about uh, 50, uh, balding, a bit overweight, um, tall. I do, I do, I remember him well. He was dropping off, he was dropping off some title papers for me. Come on in, come on in. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name's Frank, so I extend my hand. He's like, he just kind of smiles and says nothing in return, just shows his yellow teeth and then turns and keeps going in. Okay. Uh, so I'll head in. He says, so what happened to Jamie? I assume you're here because he's no longer around. You, there was some sort of problem at the office. Well, I'm, I'm, he's my friend. I mean, I know I work with him, but uh, we, we hang out and we have the odd beer. Um, and uh, he, he's missing. Uh, and I think the last place I can track that he was was up here. So I guess I was trying to track his, his, uh, his whereabouts. Well, uh, he dropped off my papers. We talked for a bit. And then he went on his way. Uh, I don't know where he's at. Hmm. Did he, did he seem okay or, or did he? Yeah, he seemed fine. He was very interested in my work, actually. We talked about that for some, at some length for some time. Uh, very nice man, nice man. Hmm. Well, I, I don't want to pry into your, your business, but do you think that um, there could be any connection between the work he was doing for you and his disappearance? Well, I don't see how. And he kind of goes, and as you're moving through his cabin, you get the distinct impression as you move through the cabin that no one lives here. Like, it's just empty. There is no furniture. Um, there is not even like a table or chairs. It's just like a, like a shell, really. And he'll kind of he'll but he'll you know he kind of will go to the kitchen area and there's a refrigerator and he'll uh he'll offer you a beer you know he, he has a, his beers in the fridge and he'll hand you one if you take it i mean i shouldn't i'm i'm driving back into town you know the way these roads get uh, that's very, very responsible night. of you frank although it's 1989 what am i saying <laughs> so i should take a beer okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Just to, to, to have it hang out the side of the, the car as you're driving down the road. He says, <clears throat> I'm something of what you might call a hobby archaeologist. I, I like to dig for ancient Native American artifacts. Uh, Jamie found this to be very interesting, but I'm not sure why that would be connected to his disappearance at all. It's really rather boring, really. You know? A lot of digging. Most of the time, you don't turn up anything. Yeah, although you'd be surprised what we'd find, you know, when we're stripping, uh, stripping land. You know, we find all oh, kinds yeah. of things, especially in the early stages, surveying. You know, hmm. any kind of like, you can kind of tell that like um, he's interested in what you just said. Like you dangling out the possibility of um the possibility of like having found something interesting on a you know on a job site like he that's something that might get him to open up a little bit like what do you do um i mean some of that stuff gets put in museums but other stuff you know without a if we don't have the funding for an expert and we don't need to have the the uh, official paperwork it just gets dumped um in a storage closet or something like that uh if that's the kind of thing you're interested in i could um 
I know I could talk to someone at head office and see. Um, Give me a roll. Get see you in there. This. Let's see if he buys this <laughs> or falls for this. Not that you're lying necessarily, I, but just you know, to see. Uh, I yeah, I, I don't think I'm getting anything for my kind of professional. Yeah, I, think, I think it's one, think it's one think die it's or sanity, really. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I'll just go with one die. Looks like a one, although the, <laughs> the design of the cube doesn't. Dude. Yeah. He, um, you're not getting much for a one. <laughs> um, <laughs> unless you want to risk sanity. Do you want to risk sanity? I mean, to get him to open up more. Um, I don't think so. I don't think Frank is, is it was a throwaway remark. I don't think he was mm. really uh, using it to fish. Mm. Um, um he says he's i'll tell you what i'm looking for i'm looking for idols strange totems that belong to the native people of this area if you happen to come across something that looks particularly monstrous or grotesque let me know i be willing to pay a lot of money for such a thing. Okay. He says, now if you excuse me, I need to get about my day. I'm sorry to hear about your friend. Um, did Frank notice that there was a car around no. the house? No. How are you going to get, him to get it back into town or are you just working here in your little cabin? He's like, Oh, I have my ways. And he kind of gives you that smile, with the yellow, that yellow toothy smile again. And says, "I hope your friend turns up, Frank." And he kind of like moves over to the door. He has a very graceful, like he moves very, very gracefully, and opens the door and you know kind of ushers you out. Okay, well, I'll say goodbye to him and get back in my di into the car and, and drive back. You're going to notice as you as you get in the car and maybe look at the paperwork that you had, like the address and stuff of like where Jamie was at, you're gonna notice that the name of the, the of who he was delivering the papers to on the form has been like scratched out. So you're not even leaving with this guy's name. Yeah, he didn't give it to me either, so. <laughs> Let's cut uh, back to, uh, well, uh, really, let's go to, I mean, all three of you, you, you can all meet back up if you want. I mean, you all have like kind of done some some preliminary research, uh, but I'll just, I'll leave you that option. But uh, Benny, what would you be doing? Do you want to go straight back and meet with the others or do something else? Um, yeah, I was going to um, tuck that newspaper under my arm and then head to the, uh, probably head to wait outside of the sheriff's station, wait for uh, Allie. Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll have that scene. So Allie, you come out, you're there. Um, take it away. Hey, did you uh, find anything out? Well, I I don't know. It's really weird. Uh, let's step away from the station a bit. Let's go over by your car. Yeah, yeah, so, sure. So I, I talked to Deputy Andy, and I, I know you don't know him, uh, Benny, but you know he, he's a nice guy, but he was so weird when I talked to him. He's... He, he did admit that they think that there is something going on with these disappearances, but, and this is, well, okay, this is one of the multiple crazy things. He said that the sheriff thinks it has something to do with a bunch of trees that are dying up north, and if you can explain to me how trees dying have anything to do with people going missing over time, please. And then to make it even weirder, because he was 100% serious, like he was afraid to even whisper that to me. And then, so he has this little nosebleed, and he keep and he keeps talking about this weird dying trees thing, and it like turns into a gusher. The dude acts like nothing's going on. It's just like I hand him a handkerchief out of my purse, which I'm grateful he didn't give back. Uh, but, Benny, Allie's nose has been bleeding this entire time as she's as she's saying this. Uh, roll plus sanity, please. Uh, 
or roll a sanity die. Oh, five. Okay, so you're going up by one, two. So as Allie's telling you this story about the sheriff's deputy who who doesn't notice his nose bleeding, Allie's nose is bleeding at that time. I'm I'm kind of doing that. Do. I'm kind of doing that thing where I'm like holding my finger up, like, oh, Allie, Allie, Allie uh, your yeah, your no, your nose there. It's uh, I I think you got the same thing going on, Allie. What? Oh my god! Can't even feel it. Okay, well now I'm thinking he's sick, or or you're sick, or there's something in this town. That's weird. Um, we'll we'll keep that in mind, and we'll circle back to that. Uh, do you know anything about? I, I take out the paper and I like open it in front of you. Do you know anything about this biker gang? This uh, Hounds of the Moon. You will know, have heard of them, Allie. Like you maybe not. You don't know a lot of details, and they don't come into town very often. But yeah, you'll be aware of them. I, I, yeah, I've I've heard of them. I mean, it's you know they're a group of bikers, and you know we just assume that they're probably involved in some sort of underworld type stuff. You know your typical biker thing, drugs, right. human trafficking. So, you know. uh, so Sylvia for some reason was looking up these bikers because this paper is six months old. So she was doing some digging on something. And I'm thinking Frank might know something about it because uh, apparently they were getting into some some scuffles with the uh, the loggers around here. Oh, weird. Yeah, that's not so much the group that we get at the Great Pine Resort. You know, we tend to get more of the pillars of the community, if you will, and the rich tourists. Um, but I can ask around about that and. It's kind of thinking, and is my nose still bleeding copiously, or is it stopped now? No, just that little bit. Yeah. Okay, and I'm like, um, I'm kind of freaking out. I, you know what? Uh, I, I want mine trying to meet up with Frank when he gets back from wherever it was he was heading, where that uh, little uh, cabin yeah. or whatever is. Uh, but I kind of like to stop by and visit uh, Andy's girlfriend and just see if she's noticed how weird he is because <laughs> i've never seen andy act so secretive and then well i guess i mean i didn't notice this nosebleed but that's freaking weird i want to find out if that's been going on for a while yeah i wonder if she has it too i, I keep like checking my nose like as we're talking like i'm nervous that i'm gonna get this nosebleed uh yeah, I, I think is it cool if I go with you? Because I think that uh Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's cool. Um I tell you what though, I'd I'd like to drive my car back and park it by my apartment. You can follow me over there. And then yeah, we'll sure. go visit Sarah. Uh she works at the five and dime. Awesome. Okay, so uh Sarah's the girlfriend of Andy. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. They can know that. Okay, so the two of you are going to go talk to Sarah. That's that's great. Um, Frank, where do you go? Where do you head after that meeting with, with this big man? So um, I think that the thing that sticks with me is I just want to see if I can find out this guy's name, right? Mm. Um, and I'm wondering if I go by um, Jamie's office. Mm -hmm. Um, and I relate the story of how he disappeared and I'm looking into him, I'll be able to get them to to kind of slip up and give me the name of the, the guy he was driving to. Seems like a bit of a long shot, but you know, if I'm friendly, you never know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I like that. So you're gonna just go to his office and I mean, you, you have a couple of options here. I mean, you can try to go like, you can try to go into his office and go through his things yourself, like surreptitiously, or you can just yeah. try to convince someone to show you his papers. I mean, which what would be your approach? I prefer not to get kicked out of town. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I guess the other thing is, if I obviously if I wanted to find out who owned land, I need to you know retain them. So if it comes to that, that's a I think a fairly straightforward retainer, right? To mm, to, yeah. to, to find out who owns land. Yeah. Uh, so that's my kind of my, my fallback. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you uh, we'll have that scene in a minute. Let's go to the um, let's go to Sarah, the Sarah scene. So 
Ali and Benny, you get a you get to the uh, you know I, I think she, we'll say she works. He's at a five and dime, like just yeah, just like, yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll store. Uh, do you know her personally? It's more of that you know small town. You kind of know mm, yeah. uh, people that are at least around your age group. That we were maybe a couple grades apart in school, so we're not yeah. friends, but. We know each other. We know each other on site, and like, hey, maybe exchange pleasantries, but we don't like do anything together. Yeah, perfect. So, um, she, you know, you go in. Um, there, there's maybe a customer or two in there, and um, you know, when you come in, she's like, she's like, hello. Hey, Sarah. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, Allie, right? Allie Wilson. Yeah, that's right. Who's your uh, friend? She... Oh, this uh, Sarah. This is uh, Benny. He's a friend of mine from uh, out of town. Benny, this is Sarah. Hey, Sarah. I hold my hand out for a handshake. Oh. Hi, Benny. She shakes your hand. Uh, she's kind of like a, uh, you know, she's she's wearing like a, um, she's wearing like a sort of like like a plaid, you know, like a red check plaid, you know, kind of shirt or whatever, and um, hair pulled back. Um, jeans and she's like uh what you guys come looking for well actually i was wondering if you just have a quick second sarah um i was just visiting with andy uh, uh in the last hour here and well and i'd lean in closer to him and her and whisper and he was acting kind of strange and he had this nosebleed and was like didn't even notice She's it. Like, I I'm... know, I know what you mean. He's been that's that's been happening the last couple of days. It's the weirdest thing. Yeah, I'm worried about him. I want to make sure that you knew about it because I think he should see a doctor or something. Has he been acting strange? Because he was acting kind of like all secretive. And you know, Andy is the, such a sweet guy. You're so lucky to have him. And uh, give me a roll. See how much she opens up here. All right. And then uh, you can get help from Benny if you. Uh, if you think you need it, or if you, or, if, or actually, you can both just roll a die if you want to try to. Sure, yeah. We just, we just pick the highest of them. Five's a good result, though. Who's is that? That's oh, we mine. both got fives. Yeah, oh, sweet. Fives. Okay. All right, cool. Um, she kind of, she, she says, <clears throat> Uh, and, and there's a couple of other like you know I think the last customer leaves like you know before you know the one that was the last one that was in there before you guys and she goes and does the whole like close the close the store lock the door and flip the flip the sign to closed right and she says I'm really glad you guys are here because whatever's going on like whatever's going on with like the people who've been kind of like going missing lately and all those trees up, up in the North wood. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. It's got the whole, everyone's spooked about it. Like the sheriff's department, they're completely spooked about it. And Andy is, he's really, really, uh, and you can tell she's getting kind of like, she's like, listen, he found a letter and it's a letter about norma and she kind of like her eyes kind of roll um norma is the young gal that works at the double q it's about norma who of course andy has never stopped having a crush on <sighs> i don't know what was in the letter but it's really it's he hasn't been acting the same ever since and it's it's weird it's like totally weird it's at it's at the apartment i could get it oh uh, i i think we should take a look at that because i don't know that's just not like andy and norma everyone what's the deal with everyone like oh norma norma i'm like so sick of the way everyone just like trips over their tongue when she's around well, i mean she's pretty cute sorry yeah thanks <laughs> benny <laughs> Um, yeah, she's like, everybody loves Norma, but big surprise. She's like, um, yeah, yeah, let me just, uh, I'm, you know what, let me just, let me just, let me just, let's just go out the back. I've already locked up. We'll go out the back. We'll go over to my place and I'll, and I'll show it to you. And I mean, I've read it. It's just, it's kind of some, 
weird shit, if I'm being honest. But oh, um, thanks, Sarah. Yeah, yeah I appreciate because you know my roommate Cassandra's gone missing now, and Benny here. Yeah. Okay. His, yeah. His yeah. aunt uh, is Sylvia, the lawyer. You know her? She's like the. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, she I'm sorry went missing a couple months ago, so we're just trying to figure out what's going on. And boy, if if it's affecting Andy, you know, if we can figure something out, I, sh I don't want to see you guys have trouble. Oh, and, and um, real quick, Sarah, uh, have, have any of these uh, Hounds of the Moon bikers come into the bar or come into the Five and Dime here? Maybe in the last six months or so. She's like, oh yeah, they're in, they're 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 here fairly often. I mean, you know, they come in, they come out, they pick up whatever, like you know, oil and shit for their bikes. Okay, um, nothing weird though, nothing out of the ordinary. You no, know, I mean they're they're kind of well. Wait till you see this letter. <laughs> I think that I think I think that may answer some of your questions there, Benny. And she says, but I mean, they seem nice enough. And she goes to she'll take you guys up to the apartment to, to show you this letter. And I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. Yeah. You guys, you're there, she's got the letter and she shows it to you. And the letter is really strange. The letter basically is um it's it's unclear like who wrote it except we know that it was it was found in it was found in the effects of one of the people who one of the earliest people to be reported missing like a long time ago right um we'll say that person's name was um well, george mccall and he's one of the earliest people to go missing right and the letter is about um it's about Norma and a strange party that George attended. Um, the party was with these bikers. It was out in the woods. And apparently, like, the party got really weird. And they began to, like, address Norma, like, by a different name. They began to address her as uh, Mormo, Maiden of the Moon. What the hell is this? And and it kind of describes like how basically um, they they would refer to her as Mormo, Maiden of the Moon, Goddess of the Night, right? And that like the, and that like she was like almost like a mascot to these bikers, and the way they, they the way they treated her was really strange. And the normal was acting really strange too. Yeah. Uh, unclear who the letter was being addressed to, who it's going to be sent to. That's not clear, but. That is so weird. Can 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 we can we take this, Sarah? Sorry. We've um, got yeah, another just person. Just told Andy I gave it to you. Oh right? no way! I'll I'll keep that totally quiet. And I'm gonna like I'm so sorry you're going through this and give her a hug. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll cut there. So, yeah, so Frank, you're going to uh, Jamie's office, cool. And uh, I think he has like a, he was a paralegal, right? Yeah. Uh, we'll say that like, it's like a, we'll say it's like one of those, um, we'll say it's like one of those like law offices where like four or five lawyers get together and they, you know, they open up like a, they have like a, a practice, so they each do different practice areas or whatever. And they probably have like a couple of paralegals who who do like work among them right maybe Sylvia sure. was one of those yeah and um and there's going to be a secretary named June and I think June will be the person you see when you first walk in um she's uh, middle-aged um kind of you know um a little more like refined and elegant than most of the people in Mercy Falls sure um so I I might have met her before sure um you know, if I if I've if I've met up with with um, Jamie after work or something, maybe yeah. she was there. Uh, hi, June. She's there. Um, it's Frank. Well, hello, I'm, Frank. I'm, uh, How are you? Yeah. Um, listen, I'm I'm kind of trying to track down Jamie. Um, Have you heard anything about where he's at? Nothing. That's the weirdest thing. I mean, yeah. just to just not come back to work. Yeah, I know, and. Um, I went out, he had a, 
the last day I know he was around, uh, he had to deliver some paperwork um, up the hills to this guy. Um, and I just went out there. Um, and OK, he did make the delivery, and he drove away. But And then that's the last thing. Um, do you know this guy? Just, well, uh, who I, I, I mostly just handle the phones and scheduling and, and printing and copying and things. But um, I, I know that he was delivering. I, I know that he was working on a title thing for, for a client um, who, well, <laughs> let's just say he's a very secretive client. Sure. And which of the lawyers was he working for? She for says, this job. Oh, uh, well, she, well, Sylvia. Sylvia. Oh, Sylvia. Who also has not come back to work um, in recent weeks. Was, was that at the same time? It's or... pretty crazy around here. <clears throat> OK. Because um, I met with her nephew, uh, guy from out of town recently, and he was trying to track her that down, too. Be Benny. Benny. Oh, he's probably been here already, right? Um, Gosh, it's the weirdest thing. I mean, this person who they were, this client, it was all very like weird and hush hush. Um, I, I I don't even think I don't even think the title was being held in his name. Uh, I, I think I think it was it was some some ABC XYZ holding company. I mean, just you know, but it was all it was all legit. I mean, there was the, the purchase and everything was, there was nothing fishy about it. Um, do you think, do you think that has something to do with where Jamie and maybe even Sylvia are? Yeah, I, well, it's the only kind of arrow I can see on the map, you know? Mm. Um, so what happens to all of Sylvia's casework or, or all of her stuff now that she's kind of missing? Well, she's only been missing for about a month. And so, you can always kind of, you can push off the clients for a little while before you have to take some kind of action, you know. <clears throat> that's what we've been kind of doing, just uh, sort of uh, saying that, you know, she's on sabbatical. But like, really? So like, who would be able to look at her stuff? And here's where you like, um, so uh, all you, you, all of her stuff is still in the office and all of her, her whole caseload, all that stuff. Like there's nothing, like all that's like, you know, normal. Um, but you may have to, she'll, she'll kind of say, she'll say, well, I mean, we, we are still trying to respect attorney client privilege here. And well, it's complicated. We're trying to respect attorney client privilege, of course, and officially Sylvia is not missing. She's just, you know, true. We haven't heard from her, but we don't know where she's at. I mean, she may she may come back. I and mean, it's we don't know what to do. We don't know what's going on. We're just crossing our we're just crossing our fingers here, hoping that it all shakes out at the end. Sure, yeah. I don't wanna rock the boat, but May, if there's a clue that helps us to find her, you know that would be that would be a big deal. I know Benny is super worried about his aunt, and she may you might be able to convince her to like let you just poke around Sylvia and Jamie's work, yeah. uh, a little bit. Um, but just give me a die roll. I mean, you you've, okay. you've, you built your case, I think, sufficiently. I think this is just probably one die insanity if you want it. Yeah. I don't think there's, <clears throat> um, yeah, I think it's just going to be one die. I do. <laughs> I'm working my way up the results. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to risk sanity to get a better result? I, I think I might be pushing sanity. Uh, sorry. Ah, all right. Oh, <clears throat> so you're getting max result, and um, and you're also going to do a sanity die roll. Uh, give me the sanity die roll first. I want to see how that goes to see if your sanity, if your insanity is going up. Okay, it is going up by one, so you're at two now. Everybody's at two. Okay. She'll say. <clears throat> 
The other lawyers are out. I'm the only person in the office right now. They'll be back after lunch. They'll be back from lunch in about 30 minutes. Don't tell anyone I let you do this, okay? But you've got 30, you've got 30 minutes. And then she like, she opens up Sylvia's office and just lets you in. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> and then I assume you're gonna start rifling around looking through things. Yeah, I think I'll start with the Jamie stuff. Here's the thing. Right. As, as she's like, opening the door up for you. Um, she's a middle-aged woman, well past, like well into menopause, right? But she is visibly menstruating. Uh, there is blood like in, like, like on her dress, like where she was sitting and she doesn't seem to notice it. Um, and, and do you point it out or? Um, I think I'm gonna, Politely ignore us. <laughs> okay. How does it make you feel though? That's what that's where your sanity is going up. Uh, yeah, I, I'm super weirded out. It's you know disturbing. You know, I don't know what's going on. This isn't doesn't even. <clears throat> she might be injured too, to be fair. But it you know it definitely looks like kind of like you know that girl in middle school who you know like before she starts wearing. You yeah, know, like, yeah. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem normal to me, but I'm kind of maybe too straight laced to in, in these kind of <laughs> confines. Maybe if it was out in the country, right. I might say something. Yeah. But no, you I'm just like, hope she'll oh, notice it at some point, right? Yeah. Not looking, not looking, not looking. Right. Yeah. Um, okay. But it's maybe something I can't get out of my head, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, we'll, we'll do your your, your search. Ali and Benny, uh, after you, got, you guys have this letter in hand, you say goodbye to Sarah. Where do you guys go? Uh, say, Benny, you want to come back uh, to my place? Because, you know, I just realized I didn't really go through any of uh, Cassandra's things. I mean, that didn't even really occur to me. But now that you mentioned that newspaper, I mean, should probably take a look around and then see if we can't uh, track Frank down. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Um, she, uh, oh, uh, something else. Uh, Sylvia got this. Uh, what are they? Cell phone. Uh, she got a cell phone that uh, she always takes with her, and uh, oh, she, yeah. left, she left that behind too. Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Like you always gonna... had that with her. You could see the antenna sticking out of her purse all the time. Right. You're not going to buy something like that and then just leave it at home. So she was uh, proud of that thing. Yeah, I would be too. Jeez. But yeah, so so keep an eye out for anything that may be weird like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you you can come up with me. Sure. Sure. I mean, I look at the uniform. Like you must have like some experience uh, checking things out and whatnot, right? I mean, looks like oh, uh, you know, for a yeah, law enforcement yeah. history there. Of course. <laughs> so I'm picturing our shared apartment. It's like a little two bedroom. Uh, it's like a walk up in a old home that's kind of in the downtown area uh, or off the downtown the, where the poorer people live, if you will. And so my side, uh, my room is a total mess. The kitchen's kind of a bit skeevy. I, uh, sorry for the mess. I just, you know, ever since Cassandra disappeared, I just kind of, I don't know, kind of stopped like really taking care of things. So uh, not uh, normally this bad a mess. But, no no uh, judgment. Don't worry. Yeah. So Cassandra's room is right here. And I don't know, I guess we can kind of like go through things. I feel kind of weird about doing it. But I want to find out what's up with her. Well, I mean, if I went missing, I don't think I'd be mad if somebody went through my stuff to find me. So, all right, well, you understand. You just got to promise you don't talk about anything we find if it's something that would embarrass her, okay? Because the only I know thing I'd I'm want someone in, to do that for me. The only thing I'm interested in is something's going to help us find her and uh, Jamie and and uh, Sylvia. So, no worries. Okay. Do you want the closet or the dresser? Closet. All right. So you guys I'll are going to search for some other stuff. Yep. Uh, that sounds like a like a helping die roll. So um, sure Ali, Ali, you can be principal, and then uh, you can roll 
aid or roll a die, Benny, as well. Um, I think I'd like to throw sanity on the line just at the get go. Does that sound good? Perfect. I love it. Go for it. <laughs> uh, I <Fine>. got a six. <laughs> Okay. So, did you risk I, sanity? did you risk sanity as well? Um, I didn't risk a sanity, but now because I got a six, I'll have to make a sanity check. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, good. 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 Great. Um, okay. Good result, though. Right. Six tells you a lot. You are. Where are you searching principally, Ali? Uh, I'm what, going, what kinds of things are you looking for? I think that's what I'm asking. I'm looking, I'm looking for like if she has a journal mm -hmm. uh, or like jewelry box where people kind of put odds and ends and stuff. So mm -hmm. probably because this just seems to be human nature going through the lingerie and sock drawers first because that seems to be where people think that they can stick stuff and no one would ever <laughs> look there. Uh, right. So I'm going through that, and maybe uh, if she has a little nightstand, just checking the things on top of that too. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, journal is good, right? You, I assume you turn to the last entry. <laughs> yeah, start there, and then I work my way back if I see something. Yeah. The very last thing that she was talking about was she was talking about the hounds of the moon biker gang and how they had been inviting her out to these like parties in the woods and she started to like get a little freaked out by them um and a little scared like she was scared that maybe they were gonna like i don't know like grab her or something like she felt like they were really aggressively wanting her at these parties and uh, she did one. She was like, I don't want anything else to do with it. And that was kind of the last thing. Um, clearly something going on with these bikers out in the woods. And there's the, there's a connection there, right? Between Norma yeah. and, uh, and other people. Like it's a, yep, it's a thing. Definitely. Right? One of the first people that went missing, George Jackson. Right? Yep. Hey, hey, Benny, check this out. Last entry in her journal here. No See that? way. Yeah. Sounds to the moon again. I mean, this is as conclusive as you can get, right? Like, they are involved in this. Gotta be. No way they're not. Allie, it is not your time of the month, but you are definitely experiencing a heavy flow. Oh, I, I, I'll, I'll be right back and run to the bathroom. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I just, uh, just keep reading the diary. Well, sanity. That's where that's coming from. A little weird bit. Got a three. Going up. And as you are, um, well, how do you have what's, what's going on with your mind as you're going in there? You know, like just, you know, taking care of that. But like after that, you know, what do you? Well, it, it's a total what the fuck where like maybe she's actually muttering to herself the whole time while she's getting out the maxi pad and like, what the fuck? This is like right. nuts. I, it's uh, like it's like weeks off. Like it's nowhere yeah. near. Yeah. 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 Like it was. Yeah. I'm two weeks early or right. whatever. And it's yeah. just like and normally I'm very regular with that almost like clockwork. And so. And I'm not active with anyone right now, so I'm just connecting like, it with the, the bleeding yeah. random nose yep. bleeds. Yep. Right? I, I'm yeah, like, all, yeah. yeah, I'm so I'm just like kind of have feel like uh, what's wrong with me, and now anything that's odd probably is going to have me be a little twitchy, you know, if like my thumb hurts i'm like oh my god that's another sign. So <laughs> I, you can see when I come back from the bathroom. Uh, that I look, her body posture is more rigid, like she's kind of got her arms crossed and holding her elbows in tight against her body and her shoulders look really tense. Just the whole body language is like stress, maybe. What is up, Allie? What's going on? Uh, I remember that nosebleed? 
Yeah. Well, I check my nose, like worried. No, no, it's not you. It's me. But I'm two weeks early, and that just never happens. It's really embarrassing to talk about. But I mean, it's just fucking biology, right? I don't know why everyone's so weird about it, but that never happens. Uh, you know I, what I mean, right? Does two it hurt? Early. Does it hurt? Ah, oh, man. Yes. Uh, cramps and everything, but whatever. Women are tough. I'll be tough. Yeah. I, I, I can't really help you with that, but that's weird. Does that, is it the same thing as like your nose bleed? Are you sick? I don't know. I'm freaked out because this just doesn't happen. I don't just get nosebleeds and I'm like clockwork. Otherwise, for body rhythms, this is freaking me out. Well, you guys have the journal. You've learned a lot here. What do you do? Where do you go? Uh, can we do a little bit of a retcon that when we split up to do our different things that we agreed we'd meet, like for dinner out at the Great Pine With Frank. Resort? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I'm willing to fast forward to like dinner time out there unless anyone has anything else. We'll give, we'll give Frank do. his searching through yeah. Sylvia and Jamie's things. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Cool. Let's go to that then. Oh, <laughs> and, and just real quick. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming, but um, just make sure that uh, she also didn't pack anything. Her clothes look like they're all in place. There's no bags missing or anything like. Right. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, you'll okay. learn that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Frank. So you're in Sylvia's office, uh, and uh, yeah. Jamie worked with Sylvia, so a lot of their work will be overlapping there, right? Um, at the outset, it all looks pretty normal. Um, nothing would stand out like as particularly crazy or weird if you, you were just kind of, if you were like, say, working in that office and you went in there just to see, you know, like if there's anything that needed to be taken care of, empty the trash or whatever, right? Um, so what do you do? You've got 30 minutes. Um, I'm looking for anything to do with, you know, recent title transfers, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. and I know, I guess at least I have that road address. Yeah. So anything with that on us. Yeah, um, I love it. I love it. Um, give me a roll. Let's just see how it goes. See what you can pick up. Okay. to one okay uh awesome let's clear these uh and and did you did you have sanity there too no i didn't no. Oh, okay that must have been another die roll that was refreshing so i'll clear this all right yeah uh not a great result um but we'll you have the, you have the option of risking sanity but otherwise i'll just keep going here um you are going through things right and you you're going through drawers like you know flipping through folders and all that kind of stuff right and you get to you get to uh you basically lift up some some files and you're looking at like the bottom of a file cabinet drawer okay and the bottom of that file cabinet drawer there is a distinct slick of like milky white slime like covering the bottom of the drawer okay and as the light coming in through the half open venetian shades hits the this white slick slime you can see that there's actually like a nimbus or like a sheen of color that is like going like over that that, that's, that kind of hits it a little bit and it's almost like it almost looks like it's moving like this color like kind of moves like across the surface of this white slime uh roll your sandy die please all right so i'm rolling two am i or is this uh when, you know, whenever i just call for a sandy roll it's just a single d6 oh, okay okay and is that higher than your current sanity uh, yeah, yes. it's higher. So you're so you're going now up by you, one. Now you're high. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now you're so you're going up to three. Then um, seeing that as uh, very strange, uh, not does not seem physically possible, like anything you've ever seen before. How does it make you feel? 
Uh, I think I'm just trying to rationalize it. So I'm saying it just looks like some kind of milky white sap that you might get out of a, a sick tree or something like that. It's like completely normal. But I know I'm just, you know, it's not like I'm lying to myself. I'm trying to lie to myself. Um, and I think I'm, I'm, I'm just going to kind of try to shut the filing cabinet and not look at it anymore. Do you, I think, do, you, do you handle it or take it or anything? No, I'm I'm okay. I'm completely backing off this, um, uh, and I'm not even thinking of the papers I'm holding. I'm I had maybe been thinking of doing a photocopy of some of them, yeah. Put finer minds to work on them, but no, I'm just dropping them on the floor and, and leaving. Um, uh, maybe I have seen something like that, but I don't know. I don't think so. Um, um, Awesome. Uh, as you're leaving, June's like, like uh, June, you know, she's like, are, are you okay that, that you weren't in there very long? Yeah, there, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. She's like, oh, all right. Um, blood just dribbling down the sides of her mouth, out of her nose. Um, she does not seem to notice it. Roll another sanity roll. Uh, and it's higher. So is that a four? Is that a one or a four? Oh, that was a one. Oh, okay, yeah, you're good. You're good. Yeah, yeah. That wasn't nearly as shocking as seeing like the, <laughs> the other bloods. So. That's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's completely normal now. <laughs> and you leave. Um, let's take a quick bio break, uh, a couple minutes. We'll come back and we'll have the scene at dinner at the Great Pine. Okay. About five. Oh. Yeah, about five minutes.
Oh, I'm really yeah. digging this, Jason. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, it's fun. Um, I'm here. Chris, okay, cool. The Great Pine is a large resort hotel. If you've seen the Twin Peaks TV show, you know what it looks like. It is uh, replete with Native American uh, decor, uh, great Northwest, you know, sort of like, you know, it looks it looks like a big luxurious log cabin on the outside, right? Um, rugs, big, huge fireplaces, that kind of thing. Um, this is where the money of Mercy Falls hangs out, right? It's almost like a, there's a, there's almost a country club vibe to it. Um, and, uh, but anybody can go and get a room there, right? That's no big deal. But as far as like the dining room and that kind of thing, like, you know, there are, there are lawyers, there are businessmen, that kind of thing, all kind of hanging around. Um, uh, lots of people from out of town, uh, conferences, you know, that kind of thing going on. So, Dinner, yeah, at the Great Pines. You've all agreed to meet. Yeah, we can um, just to be just in the interest of time. We'll just assume that you guys have shared all the relevant information, uh, all the freaky things, and all that stuff has happened, and uh, and now you're on to coffee and dessert. <laughs> so, um, if you if you were able to eat at all, right? But it's evening, nighttime out. Um, fire crackling uh, in the Great Hall in the Great Room there, dining room. Let's have a scene. Go for it. So I don't know about you guys, but I don't know. I, this dogs of the moon. I mean, there seem hounds so of the moon. Tied, or, oh, hounds of the moon are so tied up in all of this. I, yeah. Do you know anything about them, Frank? Have you ever had any run-ins with them? Um, I had a lot of trouble. Yeah, I'll, I'm sorry to jump in. You will know the stories about the logger. They get into fights with the loggers sometimes, so you'll know that. Yeah. Um, I try, I mean, I work with them and all, but I try not to get too involved in, in, in the loggers affairs. I mean, they're really tight knit kind of, yeah, sure. I don't know. Um, but I, I didn't know that they, I mean, they have a beef, they have beef with anyone who comes on their turf and tries to piss around, but I didn't know it was anything serious and I didn't really connect them with any disappearances. But like this guy, this old man, he's really freaking me out. He's inside my head. What? Um, I mean, like, I can't stop thinking about him and uh, how he might okay. be connected to everything. He's not inside my head. All right. I would um, believe almost anything at this point. <laughs> and these trees, I kind of heard stuff about them, not in my patch. So, um, like the Do you fact know where that, that they, is, though? Yeah, I know the guy who takes care of over there, so I can, I, I could probably get away with just driving in. Um, um, I, it might be interesting to call him and see what the deal is, because it's really interesting that these two things, both are the disappearances and the trees, started to happen at the same time. Yeah, heck, I'd be willing to go up there. I mean, you, you know what to look for for healthy versus unhealthy lumber and stuff. Right? Well, the way I understand it, you just can't miss these things. It's not like you need to be a no, botanist to, it's that to see that they're wrong. Up. Yeah. Weird. But like, what are these bikers doing that's, are they killing the trees? Like, are they trying to take down the logging industry or something? I don't get it. Oh, it sounds like some sort of like cult thing almost, doesn't it? I mean, you yeah, know, more more shit. Like those D and D kids and stuff with all their satanic rituals, that kind of thing. I never like those role playing people. <laughs> <laughs> They're the worst bunch of geeks. Uh, well, and you know, I do know uh, that sometimes uh, the hounds hang out at the nail. You know that dive bar out on the edge of town, right before the big trees start. That roadhouse out there. I mean, I don't know. Is that on our way to uh, that part of the forest where all the trees are dying off, Frank? I'll tell you what, you sure are getting warmer, that's for sure. 
and as you didn't even see him approach like he's just there looming over you um, he's, he's, big, big, right? he's big yeah he's really big um, excuse me he's like and he kind of like doffs his cowboy hat at you right and he's got this yellow suit and this jowly face and he's wide and tall right and he says I'll tell you what I don't know what happened to your friends I don't know where they've gone precisely but I will tell you that it's got something to do with those trees that are dying in the north wood you're getting close that's where you need to go what do you mean precisely so you know something and you're not telling us and he he smiles and shows you like a row full of like yellowed teeth um just the most like oily smile you can imagine right wisps of gray hair sticking out of the brim of his you know out of the edge of his cowboy hat and he says how's the meatloaf here i'm trying uh, to figure out what i want to order no you're not sidestepping this i i like stand up and kind of get not quite in his face i mean obviously i'm shorter than him but i i stand up and i definitely like peacock a little bit and i'm like no you're not sidestepping this what do you know and he 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 smiles wider and kind of leans in like um like you almost feel like you feel like smaller like the room even feels like it's like getting like his like his bulk his is is like blocking the light in the room like you feel a shadow pass over you and he says listen here little boy I've seen things that, well, let's just say, if you had seen them, you wouldn't even come out of your house anymore. I'm not scared of you. And I'm telling you the truth. You need to go to the North Wood and see for yourself what's going on. And he says, now you all have a lovely remainder of your dinner. I think I'm going to go with the half chicken myself. And then he walks over to a table. Who? Kind of reluctantly sit down. Was that? So remember the guy I told you about? The guy up in the cabin? Yeah, that. That's the guy. Fuck. I wouldn't want to meet him on the woods. What a creep. I think I, I think I want you all to make sanity rolls um, because he's a very, very imposing, strange. Oh, he definitely fellow. showed me in my booties. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a three. Rolls. Okay, so you're going up. Yep, because I was a two. So, uh, I got a three five. as well. Someone rolled a d10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it still didn't help me. It still got <laughs> Or uh, I think you're, so uh, yeah, you're, going you're, up. you're going up. You're going up. How that? How do you make that? The two of you who are going up. What's your feeling about this guy? I mean, you sensed. You as I described it, like you sensed, like you almost felt yourself being diminished. It felt like the room was getting smaller, right? Like, how did it make you feel? Does it necessarily? It doesn't necessarily have to be like a supernatural feeling we get, right? It's just a no, shaking no, so, our foundation. Yeah, so I think that shaking. I have this like big city Portland attitude that I'm like, I'm not gonna let these freaking hillbillies push me around. Right. But yeah. now I'm just like, oh hey, look, I'm out of my element, and I'm about to walk into woods where forest is dying, and there is a cult of bikers who might be killing people or stealing them like i'm just it's all setting in that this is no longer just oh hey my aunt's missing i am terrified you, if, if you were previously yeah. in kansas you aren't anymore <laughs> yeah exactly uh ali feels really unmoored i mean she's been in this town all her life right so like 21 years whatever and you just see strange things over the years, but I don't know. You kind of forget about them. And now like all sorts of, she's like, Oh, and that, and then there was that time they all flew into my window and died. And just all these things are starting to pile up. And she's kind of like, not quite sure if any of this, how real it is anymore. 
um, just feeling kind of disconnected from things uh, when that guy just popped in, basically like he materialized, it felt like, and just like flat out was like talking like he knew everything we've been talking about. It's got her completely wigged out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so let's go, let's, let's figure out what we're all doing then. I mean, big man seems to think you need to be going to the North woods, but, and, and you all kind of were kind of leading into that anyway already, but, um, there's also these the bikers and these parties that they throw. We know, um, what else do we know? Let's see. Those are the two main things I think, as far as like leads to follow. Um, but really you can do almost anything. I mean, the mystery holds up no matter what you do right now. So. I think huh. the, that bar that Ali mentioned and then the woods is, is our best plan. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we could, you know, Frank, you got that big Jeep. We could take, that and i mean we could look in at the nail and just well we could see if the bikes are out in the parking lot at least and if yeah. they're not actually i don't know if i want to meet the hounds but if they're well, not there maybe we could talk to the bartender yeah i mean this is my point i don't want to bump into these guys at a bar or in the woods or on the high street like they're in trouble right um uh, you know, I'm starting to kind of appreciate the the kind of clannish superstition of loggers now. <laughs> um, I won't disagree with you at all, there, Frank. This it this is all so weird. I just like I just can't. But I think I I I know it kind of sounds strange to agree with this guy. Um, but I think we might want to go up to these dead trees. I mean, it seems crazy, but I also don't feel like he's lying. But that doesn't sure. mean he's not trying to get us killed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, it's I I want to find Cassandra if I can. So I I really if there's a chance because I mean it's only been a couple of days and I'm sorry to be saying this but I mean your friends have been gone for quite a while and. I'll be honest, I think at this point we're just trying to find out what happened to him. I mean, if they're really like the gang is like doing these weird parties and they've got moon goddesses and stuff, that just I mean that doesn't sound good. Yeah, here's the thing which is kind of I don't know, confusing me, right? So Norma had gone to these parties and they were referring to her as this kind of moon goddess wackiness. Yeah. But she's still around. Oh shit! We should talk to her. Right. So like, oh, double Q. Did, they're open. Was she, was she there hey. when when uh, Cassandra got roped in? I mean, I, I'd be if there was like a normal thing we could do. I would go speak to Norma. You know. Well, so let's. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 I just, I think Norma is our, our, our first stop, mm. should be. Uh, maybe not tonight, right? Uh, do you guys want to just wait till the next day or what? Yeah, I think, um, certainly if you don't want to be heading out to the woods In this the late night, night, right? Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's or just Frank. <laughs> <laughs> we at least drive by the nail and see if the bikers are there and if they're not. It's you know, true. The bikers are talk. more likely to be at the nail at nighttime, right? Yeah. Right. But if they're not there, then we could go. And if they are there, we just turn around and leave. And if they are there, we can count how many bikes there are. Maybe see some of them. It's not like they're looking for us. Right? I mean, why would they be looking? I don't know, there? man. At this point, that big guy knows that we're looking into this. The sheriff knows we're looking into this. If this is some weird wackadoo cult, I I, I kind of like look around the place at this point, and I'm like, who knows where their eyes and ears are, man? No, uh, I well, I was gonna say we were safe here at Great Pine, but I guess well, yeah, big. Are man. we are we safe from Maybe not so much of the moon? Right. I mean, so yeah, no. Um, so double Q tomorrow morning. Talk to Norma. Yeah. 
Um, and I, first thing I will call um, this guy I know who whose patch we're we're heading into and see if he can give me the skinny. And if he warns us off, then I don't know. Yeah, I mean, inclined to go anyway, right? But it's good to know. I'm going no matter what, but I'd rather go with at least one other person. But if there's a chance I no, can I'll, find Cassandra, I'm going. Yeah, I'll, I'll drive us up. Don't worry. You said, you, Frank, you wanted to call someone about the trees? Is that yeah, right? there's a there's a guy, uh, Jesper, who who is a kind of my equivalent in that kind of quarter um, of, of the logging operations. Uh, I won't call him tonight, but I might call him first thing in the morning at sure. his office yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, we'll have that scene like before you head out to the double queue. Okay. He says, <clears throat> Frank, how's it going, man? Yeah, all right. Um, listen, Jesper, I'm, I'm thinking I'm heading out your way this morning with a couple of people. Um, we're, you know those, um, you know a lot more than about this than me. You know those dead trees that showed up a couple of months back? Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. <laughs> my, my bottom line is feeling it, trust me. Yeah, yeah. Could we not, take- Not just- Dead. I mean, let's 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 be honest here. Not just dead, like shriveled up, root, you know, trunk and root out of the earth. It's just yeah, yeah. it's just dirt out there. Um, yeah, I guess we wanted to take a look for ourselves. I mean, I know I saw some of the pictures, but they didn't really make much sense. Um, have we've you had been... people? We've had people from the university up looking at it. They can't fi they can't figure it out, Frank. They don't know what's going on. They have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you don't mind if I pop up in the morning or later on to um, to just take a look? Yeah, I mean, you can go on my land if you want. You can go on, you know, Roger Delaney's land. You can go on. He, he rattles off a few other people. He says, he says, it's happening. It's spreading, spreading out almost like a, I don't know, like a, I don't know, like it's radiating, you know, like it's moving out, outward. It's hitting yeah. a lot of us. It's strange. It's kind of strange that we haven't seen any kind of official, you know, nationwide thing on this. Like, it's going to hurt a lot of companies. It's going to hurt the whole region. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> tell me about it. Yeah, tell me about it. You uh, hear any strange um, scuttlebutt from the loggers on this? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah they yeah. claim to have seen everything before, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, apparently there's some kind of new operation that moved in a while back, and they say that you can, if you, if you, they say that basically ever since that new operation moved in, all the trees have been dying, like, like, like a, like, a, like, a, like in a radius around this place, you know, not much. What I'm not sure what they're doing, what, what they're up to. It just looks like a big black warehouse. I've seen it from up on the ridge. Oh, who, who, whose outfit is that? No idea, no idea at all. Okay. Big black warehouse, huh? Sounds sounds something from a movie. It's a little ominous, mostly because you know you never see anybody go in or out. It's uh, not clear what they're doing. Okay, thanks, Jesper. Probably sure, if I if I uh, chemical dumping thing, that's what's killing the trees. But whatever it is, it's something severe. I mean, I mean the trees just shriveling up. These are great big pine trees, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, if I see, I see you. Otherwise, I'll catch you later. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Thanks. Well, take care, man. And he'll let you go. So yeah, we meet up at the diner, right? Yeah. So you guys are there in the diner. Uh, Norma's there. Um, you know, she's got a couple of customers, but it's otherwise fairly, you know, not, not too, not super busy. The, the the loggers who come through, they they come in really early in the morning, right? So, yeah. What do you do? You want to uh, talk to her there, Allie? You... Yeah. I do. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'll talk to Norma. Um, just follow my lead. I may start talking about this whole Mormo maiden of the moon stuff if I feel like she's stonewalling us and just watch for how she reacts. Yeah, sure. And, hey, uh, uh, 
Norma, could we get like some coffee refills over here? She said, yep, you bet. And she goes, you know, refills your coffee. And are you in, are you in a booth right at the bar? Uh, I think we're sitting up at the, at the counter. Uh, rather. At the yeah. counter. Yep. Okay. Uh, all three yeah, of she us. She refills your coffee and, you know, she's got her little, uh, the little poodle skirt that she wears, you know. <laughs> uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, she looks Pretty. like she just stepped out of a, you know, out of, out of the movie Grease or something. Right. <laughs> uh hey norma um so if the you know that uh cassandra went missing right yeah i heard about that uh, it's crazy i've been hearing these stories about uh, this biker gang hounds of the moon and that supposedly they were like hitting on her or wanted her to go party with them and stuff she's like no oh, those bikers they're not anything to worry about i mean they you know like she gets a little quiet she's like i've gone out and party with them before it's just it's just drinking beer and smoking pot just biker stuff isn't a big deal so it's not like all sorts of hard drugs and crazy sex parties and stuff <laughs> no, like that oh gosh no i no 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 i Ellie. mean not that i think you do that type of thing norma it's just like she i Okay, I'll be honest. I, because I was worried about where she is. I went through Cassandra's journal and she's talking about these hounds of the moon, and she seemed really freaked out about it. Uh, so you've partied with these guys before, and they're okay. Uh, she seems like she doesn't like you know like um, you know she maybe doesn't want to say too much just because she's you know she does she doesn't want to get a reputation right all right so i tell you what you don't have to answer that norma but what if we do this and i take a survey map mm -hmm. that frank has and slide across the counter can you just show us on there where that party area is because anything uh, you can roll. do to point me the right way yeah let's have a roll see how forthcoming she's going to be these and i'm gonna go ahead and risk a sanity roll on here too what's the worst that can happen you're already at four so <laughs> well on the upside once you get to a certain point you can start you just can start, like yeah. destroying evidence and stuff yeah you know, to get it down suppress mythos knowledge you have a good definition of upside <laughs> oh, <crap. laughs> oh, okay well my goodness. You're going to get a roll uh, on there for yeah. sure. Good result, though, as far as yep. like information. Um, so what kind of information are you looking for exactly here, Allie? You just want to know where they party? I want to know where they party and if I can tell that, you know, if she's really seems to be holding back on it being not so innocent, if it mm, seems like yeah, she's yeah. just trying to. You know. She, she kind of like leans in to, to the three of you, right? And she's like, you know, she kind of looks around, make sure no one's listening. She's like, she's like, yeah, okay, I go party with them. They're 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 crazy guys, and they get they they get up to a lot of trouble or whatever. They're bikers, but but it's really fun. I mean, they're just they're fun to be around. We we have a thing tonight. Why don't why don't the three of you just come with me? You can be my guests. It'll be great. Sure, sure, yeah. That's, on, what's the worst Frank, that could happen, right? And, I mean, and, they've yeah, never Frank, Frank's probably me. Frank's probably a little more like uptight, right, about this. I guess like she's inviting all three of you. How do you react, Frank? Oh, you're muted. I'm sort of just assuming that uh, we're just gonna go along with this, and then fuck it and go into the woods by ourselves anyway. So yeah, <laughs> sure, let's go to the party. <laughs> It's like it's really fun. Like, trust me. Like they 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 have they have they know how to have a good they know how to have a good time. And it's totally safe. <clears throat> Frank, what do you say? Frank is trying to kind of look away and not say no out, outright, but you know he this isn't his scheme. Um, but I think he's gonna maybe go along because he he doesn't want two people uh, going along without him and then something happening. Yeah. Uh, Allie, I actually put her hand on your forearm and go, you know, I'd really appreciate it if you're willing to go along, Frank, because if we get lost out there, whatever, no one knows the woods better than you out of the three of us. I, yeah, I just you never feel know. safer. We could just go missing all of a sudden. 
Sure. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tie along. Thanks. I appreciate that. Thanks, Norma. Yeah. Uh, what, what time do we meet you and where should we meet you? She's like, um, well, so after my shift, I'm going to go change and stuff. And well, I'm going to sleep for a couple hours and change and come back over here. Like, let's say like sundown out here in the parking lot. Sure. You got it. She's like, awesome. Great. She's like, yeah, bring a cooler. With what you like to drink. And okay. Cool. Thanks. And, uh, yeah. And she goes back. Well, so you guys have the rest of the day. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to just go around the table and find out what you're going to do, if anything. Um, ben, well, are we going to go out to the woods? Yeah, I still um, want to go out to that party site. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah the party, the yeah, the party will be sure. later, but like in the meantime, what are you guys going to do? I'd like to go up to the woods, and we could uh, maybe stop by the nail on our way there to talk to the bartender about the hounds. Yeah, I meant, yeah, go up to the, the party site, like, now. Like, oh, like, now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Scope it out. Well, she didn't actually tell you where the parties are at. Oh, uh, damn it. She, she just invited you guys to go with her. Right? Yep, that so. was her way of controlling the information, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, and yet, you still got entree in um, yeah. <laughs> into, the, uh, into the thing. Um, oh, I still need to do a sanity roll, too, Jason. Uh, did you get a six? I, I got a five. But my sanity roll was, was the high die. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see. I guess we have to justify this in some way, right? Oh, I've got it. So you guys are sitting there having your, um, you're having your, you're finishing up your coffee and everything, and there's a family. I think at a booth. I think it's a the summer. There's a family at a booth, and you hear one of the little girls say, "Mommy, mommy, you're." face your nose and like if you all look over there you'll see that this family of like three kids and the mother and the father all their noses are bleeding um oh, Jesus. like it's just like a it's just like a nosebleed situation going on um i'll let uh ali maybe you, you, this could be like as you guys are leaving if ali you just want to be the only person who makes the roll otherwise if you all see it you're all gonna roll so i, I think i would look i've been yeah. That's been on my radar. All right, you guys go ahead and everybody just give me a roll there. If you're gonna, if you see this, if you witness this, three. So I'm under. Oh, six. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you're going up to four. Five. So I'm going as well. Yeah, not the most. It's, uh, it's a pretty unnerving thing to see as you're getting ready to leave, right? <clears throat> and I think from from my point of view, this is like people entirely unconnected, right? This is just random, a random family uh, in a diner. This is not people letting secrets go or- right, Probably on vacation or something, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah. they're not townies. Is, okay. Um, I'm still holding so kind of my it's a disease theory in, in, in spite of evidence. <laughs> Hold on to what you got, that your last sliver of rationality. Don't, don't let the facts get in the way of your, your, yeah. your good story. <laughs> I, I grab, I grab like a handful of napkins because I'm still paranoid that I'm going to start bleeding. So I just grab a handful of napkins and shove them in my jacket pocket. So, um, well, you guys, so like we said, you guys do have the rest of the day before you have to go come back and meet Norma in the parking lot if you even continue, you know, with that plan. Uh, biker bar, I heard. Uh, and there's also the land with the trees, right? Which of those two do you guys, what's the, you can split up too. You don't have to stay together. Yeah, I think but biker bar and the land and then we head back to meet Norma. Yep. Or we head back and don't meet Norma and try to tail her later on because I'll be honest, I'd, rather follow her than go with her but now we know that she's going somewhere tonight but yeah frank if if you don't mind driving we could head up to the forest and the nail is along the main route out of town and we yeah. can either stop there on our way out or way back yeah sure i think Sounds good to me i want to take my car too i'm just paranoid i don't want a car to break down or get broken into or whatever i i want to make sure that we've got a backup plan so two cars? Is that the plan? Yeah, I guess. I, I look over at Benny. I'm like, how many times have you watched Nightmare on Elm Street? I, mean, uh, I don't do horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
so great. The nail, um, you know, biker bar off the, off the, you know, off, off a side road, off the highway, um, middle of the day. Uh, there are some motorcycles out, out front actually, uh, maybe about five or six. Um, and yeah, uh, you pull up, you know, surrounded by trees. Um, what do you guys do? Where do you go? Actually, I'll say this: as you as you step out of your cars, um, you're going to hear like the front of the biker bar looks like normal, just kind of a half semi dilapidated place with like a a big you know neon sign that's not presently lit. You know, with um, it's called the nail, but it actually looks like a sort of um, like a sort of crucifix situation, right? You know, like that's the nail being referred to, kind of a stylized crucifix thing. And uh, I would say about maybe half a dozen hogs in the front. You hear from the back what sounds like a really, really nasty dog fight. Um, you hear like snarling and barking and like howling and like it just sounds like vicious back there. What do you guys do? What the hell? Oh shit, man! <laughs> Is the I, um... I very definitively and aggressively reach into my jacket and pull out my mag light flashlight. <laughs> it's like I'm ready for action. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though if you do get into a fight with them, you automatically die. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Rules, you can't, yep, you can't do combat in the dark. It's yeah. all about. Oh, really? Yep. Yes. It's if, all if you about... do anything, yeah. If you do anything violent or aggressive, you always lose. You always die. So. Oh, that's good to know. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would have warned you before you would do sure, something. Sure. Sure. Um, <laughs> I thought there was some genre specific rule about getting getting into a fight with a mag like uh, it's like an all horror movie you die anyway. Oh, these yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a it's definitely like a it's it's Graham's nod towards like Lovecraftian stuff, right? Like, like sure. violence doesn't happen, like it, yeah. unless it's the ultimate. And when thing. violence happens, you lose a character every time, yeah. Um, but yeah, you hear this like snarling, like mixed with like cheers and like you know like. Like yeah, yeah, woo, woo, but like this, like these sound like big ass dogs that are going at it. So Allie's gonna look at Benny and Frank with kind of the oh fuck, and then kind of start creeping towards the corner. And I just want to go far enough to just look around. And uh, I want to roll to see if you go unnoticed first. Yeah. Okay. Two, yay! <laughs> um, and also, I should point out you're at uh, you're at five now too. Just so you know, on the sanity yes. uh, roller. Yep. So, um, if, if at any time you wish to suppress mythos knowledge, um, you can do that to get a chance to lower your to lower your insanity. Right. Um, so yeah, but would you would you end up with a two? Yes, that's correct. So I need to refresh the page. I guess I can't see your dice. Hold on. Uh, all right. Well, so anybody going with Allie? Or are you guys letting Allie go? By? Yeah, I wouldn't let Allie go by herself. Okay. okay. Um, I think I was before she veered off. I was going to check the front door to see if this place was actually open. Okay. Um, we, might, we, might, we, might do, we might have that first. We'll, we'll see Allie and Benny kind of going around. What were you about to say, Benny? Oh, I was going to say I think that like you. So Frank starts walking towards the door, and I start walking with Frank, and I look over to like say something to Allie, and I'm like, Allie. What, yeah. what, are you, what are you? Damn it! And I like scurry after, <laughs> nice. and so Frank will get to the front door with with me not being there. All right. Well, so Frank, we'll, we'll get to Allie and Benny in a minute. Frank, you're at the front. What do you do? So I just I just push the door open to see if it's open for business. Uh, seems to be. Um, it yeah. is a. Um, it's a it's a bar. Uh, looks a lot like the, it's very dark. Uh, the windows are blacked out, so it, the only thing illuminating the bar is just like a couple of halogen lights overhead, and and maybe like a neon lit Budweiser sign, you know, like above the bar. And there's an old guy covered in tattoos, long gray beard, um, who's tending bar, and he uh, he sees you and he's like, he's like, uh uh, no no no, it's members only. Sorry, bud. Members only. You know? Members only. Uh, okay. You don't. You don't look like no hound, so you probably better go ahead and just go back on where you came from. 
Okay. Uh, where's the nearest place I can get an early morning beer around here? Early morning beer. Yep. Um, not sure. Not my concern. Uh, so have a great day. Okay, sure. Thanks. I'll close the door behind me. <laughs> I wonder where the hell everyone else has gone. <laughs> where everybody else went. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of them, um, Ali, you are creeping around you get you haven't quite like circled the mm-hmm. the the corner yet you just hear the commotion and something happens in this dog fight that gets everybody really excited and you know they're really excited because they all begin like howling like dogs baying at the moon like all these people just howling like like oh you know, like celebratory. What do you do? So I like literally go. That's your result on your two, by the way. <laughs> or that's kind of like. So I literally go, what the fuck? And I finish poking my head around the corner yeah. and look to see what these guys are doing while they're howling and how many of them there are. If you poke your head around the corner, you're just. There's a circle, um, a circle of men. It's more than the number of bikes would indicate. It's actually probably about a dozen. And there's, you know, bikers, leather jackets, jeans, all that kind of thing. Um, they're forming a circle around like what must be like the, where the dog fight is going on. You can't quite see what's going on. All you can see is just the backs of bikers. You just don't have a good view, but you're unseen to this point. What do you do? Can I see the dogs or anything between their legs? No. I'm going to like back up around the corner and I imagine I probably. Betty's probably right up behind you, right? (laughs) Jesus. Tell a person when you're behind them. There's like about a dozen of them back there. We're trying to be quiet, right? Jesus. Uh... That shit. I don't think they're going to hear us over all the stuff they're doing, but. Where, where the hell's Frank? Oh, Frank was gonna go inside, and then you snuck off, so I came after you. No, you could. You were. Ah. Mm. Oh yeah, Let's I was just supposed Frank. to let you walk around the back of the bar with a bunch of crazy bikers having a dog fight. Hey, hey, lower your voice. Let's go, sorry, Frank. And I'm gonna head away because, like, twelve guys who yeah. are that's like way too freaky because yeah (laughs) Allie's very aware of all the stories she's ever heard ever about biker gangs and what they do to outsiders especially women so you guys can kind of bump into Frank or whatever as Frank's coming out of the bar or whatnot you guys are out in front Um, I also assume Frank uh, members only so I think we better you know get out of here yeah, I'm going to uh, get the hell out of here. Okay, we're talking the car, right? And in fact, that old guy has come up to the fr- to the door, to, to the frame of the door, just to make sure you guys are leaving, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. So, heading up to the, the North Wood now? Is that the plan? Yes. Awesome. You begin to realize straight away that you're getting to the right place because the trees just start to fall away out of your view. Like it just, it just ends up being like, as you're winding the road, you know, the bridge are kind of winding through these like hilly roads that it just becomes like, you know, you just see sunlight and just, and earth, right? There's no grass, there's no trees. It's just like barren. Um, you kind of can pull up, you know, a little bit and up to a ridge. And if you look out into the distance off that ridge, you'll see, it's it's as was described by, by 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 Jesper, which is you just see like a big like wide expanse of like where all the trees are dead and almost like a little like a bug crawling around in the dirt. You see that black warehouse um, down the ridge a ways, um, which is like the locus of it all. So I think I've told the others like what Jesper had told me that this this uh, warehouse shows up and that's kind of when people started noticing this rotting just spread out across the countryside um i guess we got to be able to 
see what I'm inclined to do is find out who owns it the old fashioned way. I don't want to go creeping around because who knows? Um, no one's seen any activity there, no one going in or out. If you guys watch it for a little could bit, be a government you, thing. you don't see anything. It just looks like a black building. Um, let's assume, Frank, in your line of work, you would have binoculars. And if you, if yeah, you pop them on, sure. it's, it looks, um, it, you're not, you're not even sure. Like, I mean, it's, it's black, which is unusual, right? Like it's like it, it doesn't look painted. It doesn't look like metal. It just looks like a, a black rectangular long construct of some sort. Um, mm. I just want to go around the table and get a read on what everyone's feeling or thinking or considering doing. Benny, what do you think? Uh, I kind of don't know what to think. I think, I think that I'm, uh, I'm still shaken from that big guy. I, I, I think that at this point, um, I'm keeping an eye all around us. So tiny bit of background. When I did security, I did, um, uh, patrols of an abandoned warehouse at two o'clock in the morning. And so I personally developed this really wonderful paranoia that I was going to be the opening scene in a horror movie. Uh, and I think that's where Benny is right now. I'm just waiting for that big guy to show up or a biker to show up or someone to show up and just hack our heads off. So I'm, I'm letting them deal with like what's in front of us. And I am trying to wait for something to come up on us. As you are, so we'll say that like Ali and Frank are, you know, Frank's looking down and Ali are chit -chat and, and him are chit-chatting about the building and you're kind of back a ways, right? Maybe up by your car, just kind of waiting and keeping an eye open. And you start to hear like the whimper of a dog, like a, <laughs> like coming from the brush. What do you do? Oh gosh. Uh, I'm going to take a minute and sort of listen and see if I can hear a person or any footsteps or anything? It just sounds like a just you can you can see it moving around in the brush or at least the movement of the of the um well I guess it wouldn't be brush because everything is dead around here, but like yeah. you know, there's still some brush. I mean, there's you know, if nothing else, it's like maybe like just some dried up yellow, sure. you know, like tumbleweed type, you know, whatever. But you see you you see movement. You can see it, I guess, like, you know, kind of uh you can tell it's a dog of some sort, right? I'm going to assume that this is a dog from like the fight maybe or something. I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to cautiously approach very slowly holding my hands up. As you um, get closer, you realize that the dog has had all of its fur shaven off. Um, it's like, uh, like, like meticulously, like there's no fur on this animal. It's just scrawny and you'd expect it to be like kind of scrawny and pink, but it's not. It looks like it's like white. It's like scrawny, hairless, white dog. Weird. And um, its eyes are kind of like uh, bloodshot, you know, like the, or kind of reddish. It's like kind of sort of an albinism thing even maybe. Um, more like the eyes are like kind of they look like they don't look like black dog eyes they look like um like almost like human eyes but like just kind of like like white streaked with red like they have no pupils that makes sense and um like the just the idea of eyes <laughs> in its socket and as it like opens its mouth and and like is whimpering you see that it has no teeth like its teeth oh have been God. like precisely removed, right? Um, roll sanity for me, please. Just, just this is just for Benny. I don't think Ali or Frank see this. That is a six. You're going up to four. I'll change it. How do you react? What do you do? Um, it doesn't look like it's being aggressive, particularly. No, it looks like it's, it looks confused, um, scared, but with those cr weird eyes, it's hard to tell, right? So I'm, I'm obviously off put. Um, and I think that 
sort of my not keeping it together is I'm aware of how weird this is and I'm going to continue acting like I was going to anyway, like just sort of in a daze. So I kind of like crouch down and I, I set my flashlight on the ground and I like hold my hand out to get to like uh, let the dog come and sniff me if it wants. I'm, I'm like, hey, come here, come here, boy. Yeah, it will. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like, um, it's not angry, like, it's not like violent or, or aggressive right. or anything. Um, you know, it'll be a little trepidatious at first, but it will eventually approach you. As, as it approaches you, you realize now too that like it's, um, like it's little paw nails have been also like very carefully removed. Oh God. Oh Jesus, man. Uh, I just, I like pet it. And it, it will, as, as soon as you touch it, like you can tell its skin is sensitive. Oh man. Um, uh, uh, Allie? Frank, uh, can you come here for a sec? Oh my god, what? Is if you both go dog? and look at the dog, you will both give me insanity rolls, please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Are we about to lose you, Allie? Three for me? I rolled on it. Safe. Okay. <laughs> I'm a rock now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, you see this, this dog, which, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not in great shape uh, very strange, right? Um, uh, the things that have happened to it don't even look like things that like you'd be able to do, right? Like even like the most like dedicated sadist would not be able to like do this. Like there's no like blood, there's no like sign of like violence toward the dog. It was almost just like, um, like the dog underwent a process, very careful precision process, right? The hell! What, what the sick. hell, man? That's Can sick. We just put this put this dog down. We can't kill it. It's that's exactly what we have to do. I don't know. Yeah, that's. Look at I mean, it. in my family, we had when the animal gets to a certain point, you spare it suffering. I look up at Frank. I'm like, I, can you? I'm not a part of that. I grab the flashlight and I like walk off to where you guys were standing before. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure Frank is the kind of guy to have a shotgun in in the back of his truck, but um, you, one you, of might, the other you, you might have a like you might have a rifle for like bears and stuff, right? I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe. Yeah. If you're a so like a, a bolt action yeah. thing, just in case, because you never know what you meet up in the woods. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna rack around um, into that and, and go over the dog. You can put him down, no problem. Okay. There's no other strange thing. It just, um, but yeah, you guys hear the crack, the loud, you know, the report yep. is really loud and kind of echoes throughout this empty uh, <laughs> um, tract of land. Which, to be fair, I'd imagine a rifle shot probably wouldn't be super out of place. Like, if you heard that, yeah, you'd just yeah, be like, hunt, oh, Yeah, I think we hunters shot. or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, let's take a quick break. We'll come back.
Oh, it's getting pretty intense. Yeah, definitely is. And the reason I am, haven't started trying to uh, push down my sanity yet is because of that whole push looking for Cassandra. She's not willing to give that up yeah, yet. Yeah. So we'll see if I wind up destroying my character. <laughs> <laughs> you may, you may, you may. Um, the, uh, I mean, even if it like, it, it just means that like, the way I treat it is like, if it happens at a certain point, it, like, it just means in your epilogue, you must be gone and crazy, right? Like, it, you, you still get to finish oh, cool. the session out, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I, um, I always drive my characters like I stole them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I might feel sad afterwards that whatever horrible thing happened, but the stories are always more interesting when you push things. Uh, My favorite way to handle okay. stuff like this is always to, uh, I really like playing the unabashed skeptic because it's always really fun to just, no, there's nothing weird going on here. These are just people, whatever, because it just, you get to walk into every situation as if you're going to be able to handle it. And eventually you're wrong. And I love that. Super cool. Let me just check my notes real quick before we continue. I definitely appreciated the, uh, the, the little dog scene. It definitely bordered the radically uncomfortable without like, without going into too much. It was definitely the implied was horrible. Yeah, I was, I was, I was like, um, I almost always find a couple of opportunities to push really, really close to maybe getting X carded, but, um, I haven't quite tipped over yet. So. That, that's something I picked up on from the, the podcast. And that's one of the things I was excited that you were running this game. Yeah. Cause I'm like, Ooh, I like being pushed to that point. Yeah, I, I'll try to put, I'll always try to push you to that limit. Um, and I don't care if I can, I, I don't care if anybody X cards me. It's, I never take that personally. So. Um, all right, let's see. Okay. I think I just got to count up some things. There's a process when you're running through these mysteries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, all right, cool. So we just had that little scene. Um, it's probably like midday. You're looking down at that black building, um, which is the the nexus of this dying tree storyline. Um, where do you guys go next? Uh, Frank, what's next? So, I mean, Frank is kind of feeling on the verge of some kind of self-destructive ideation with, with all of this. And he just put down a dog. Um, but he's trying to kind of trying to pull himself back from from doing something very straightforward and suggest that let's find out who owns this building. Like, let's go to a law office and 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 find out who owns this, right? Um, you know, nobody knows is not re a real answer. Um, and you know, that, that, that should be really straightforward, right? That, that, uh, <laughs> Let's go so, find out who owns that tract of land. Are there no um, roads leading down to that yeah. warehouse? Um, no, I mean, it's, but it's easy to, go down because there's no trees or anything. You just yeah. like slide down. But, but that's like really strange, right? Because if it was built in two or three months ago or whatever it is, if it appeared, there there would have to be tracks left by the construction operations. But it's just like there as if it was just popped down. Yeah. 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 Um but it's a good job there's no road because because we weren't driving there. <laughs> Um, yeah, Allie, what are, you, what, are you, what are you thinking in terms of next steps? Um, Allie actually is starting to try to work her way down that slope. She turns around, looks back, and is like, you can stay up here. If I'm not out or back in half an hour, I'll stay on this side of the building where you can see me. But if there's a chance that Cassandra's down there, I'm going, I know this is stupid. It's like every time I ever talked back to a horror movie, but I, I didn't come all this way to look, see some sort of freaking mutant tortured dog 
watch you kill it to just turn around and leave. And I'm striding almost angrily down the slope. I just look back at Kevin and or at Frank. I look back at Frank, give him a shrug, and I follow Allie. <laughs> Guys, if if Cassandra is down there, people have taken her, and you're not gonna just walk in and get her. You're just gonna end up in the same shit. Turn around, look up the slope angry. Whatever. Like I said, stay up there, Frank. Someone's got to keep an eye on us. And I turn around and start walking even yeah. faster and more angrily. You watch out for us, Frank. If anything happens, honk the horn and we'll rush back. How far is it away? And like uh, a mile or yeah, not not that far. Probably like um, at least a quarter of a mile away, though. Maybe half. Okay. A mile. So, so Frank, you're going to stay yeah. up, and you have you have the best view, right, Frank? Like as they're going down the hill, they will be able to see as much as you can. Um, you have the high up view, and Allie and Benny are kind of going down there. Frank, you're going to see first that during all this time, there's been no activity around the the black building, but you see now, you spy now. There's someone, someone comes out of a door at the front of it. It's a little unclear, but they clearly like come out of the building and they're running fast. They're running like really, really fast, like away. Um, it's not clear if Allie and Benny have seen it yet. What do you do? Um, so I guess I get the binoculars out. Can I zoom in and try to identify or? Sure. If you look in the binoculars, you're going to see uh, um, a man uh, wearing no clothing. His he uh, he's hairless. His body is very very white, and he's just like running, like 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 a terrified look on his face. Roll sanity, please. Ooh. Six. You're going up. So that's me up to five. <clears throat> so I'm gonna um I guess I'm gonna take out the rifle and And I think the, the the ridge is like in like a you know it's like a stair step, so like they're on a part where they can't see this, right? Yeah. Um and I'm gonna initially kind of aim at this man. And then I'm going to kind of ra raise the rifle up to, to shoot in the air to warn them off, but then kind of have second thoughts and go back to aiming at him. And if I if I have a shot, I'm going to take it. Mm. I, I, so trying to scare them off first, that doesn't work. They continue running, and then that, they're running away in the direction of, of Ali and Benny instantly. OK. So what do you do? Um, I'm kind of hoping that they hear the shot and and uh, yeah, once they, you hear they obviously that, hear the shot, but do. <laughs> do they do they turn back or do you stop? Do you turn back around when you hear the shot go off? Uh, yeah, Jesus Christ! I jump and like look around. Um, yeah, you can tell from from where you're at that like, and the, uh, you can you can you you probably know that you intuit that Frank fired his rifle, or you don't know why or what. So, what about you, Ali? You see, Allie, when that shock, the echo comes rolling down the ridges, kind of drops down into a crouch. And she can tell it came from up behind her. She's like, fuck, 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 turns around and starts running up the slope. Back towards Frank. Yeah. Well, so Frank, you'll see that they're coming back. They're kind of running back towards you. And this person, this man, this naked, white, hairless man is is continuing to book it like from the building to, in the direction you guys are from. You have plenty of time to get in your car and leave if you wish, or you can wait and see what happens. What do you do? Well, I'm waiting for the other two. <laughs> yeah, they get there. That's fine. Yeah. OK. And I'm going to drive. I, I'm in my head. I'm thinking, I don't want them to see this. Mm -hmm. 
we're just going to drive and hopefully get away and they can look at the back window all they want, but they're not going to see anything. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely going to. You have two cars too. You guys take, you guys getting both your cars right. or what? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah. I would take my car. I would definitely delay it a little bit though. I'd be like, Hey, what, what was that? What would you shoot at? Come on. We got to leave right now. So I'm, I'm getting into my car, no. put the rifle on What'd the back you see? of the seat. What'd you see Frank? And, and snap. Come on. Ali, get into the car. <laughs> I get in to the Jeep. But I'm turning around, looking out the back window. I'm gonna step towards the the ridge and sort of try and look down real quick. I don't get in the car yet. I, I'm trying to like what, like I'm ready to run back to my car, but I'm also like what what you. You see? don't have as good a view um, because you don't have binoculars, but you see a, a man, a white man, running up up the ridge up towards. Not me. Caucasian, but like white. Like white, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like yeah, like bleached. I look back. Have you driven off, Frank? Or are you still there? I am driven. I'm driving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, want roll, I want to roll from you, Benny. Uh, okay. Uh, sanity. Yeah. Yay. Under. Yeah. Okay. And um, Benny, because you're in a different car and because you delayed, I'm gonna. I want, I want you to roll to try to escape. Um, just to, or just to kind of get out of the situation without anything bad happening to you, right? Um, I will. I will risk sanity for that too. Sure. I'm gonna roll against you. Okay. Oh, you're gonna have an easy time. And my <laughs> sanity die was higher. I did not beat you though. <laughs> um, I I uh, I got a I got a uh, I got a two. As you are, so Frank, uh, Ali, were you in the car with Frank or are you with Benny? I am with Frank, but the whole time I'm turned around, yeah. leaning past the bucket seat, looking back, because I want to see either what's coming, and I'm also watching and to see what's going on with Benny as well. You, you don't see anything before you round the corner. Um, All right, and, and I'm like, whoa, slow down, Benny was, slow down. Benny was delayed, and like, yeah, Frank is just keeping gotta Frank, make sure I assume he you're comes. not slowing down. <laughs> Frank, I assume you're not slowing down, that you are just continuing on. I think if I'm around the corner... I will slow down a little bit just so we can make sure that Benny's yeah. car is following us. Benny, you're going to escape. Uh, I have you because you. I didn't beat you, but um, your car is not immediately starting. Right? There's like a, like a chunk, 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 you know, and then there's a rah, 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 you know as you're trying to get it going, and um, and as you're like as you're getting as you're trying to get the car going, you can hear getting closer and closer up the ridge, like just this like just this like raving this gibbering like like and of, of the person getting closer and closer up the ridge and you eventually like get the car started and just as you like just as you get it started this person just slaps onto the hood of your car in the window right and you get a real close face full of this man no hair no eyebrows even um his no teeth in his mouth, uh, bloodshot, strange bloodshot eyes with no pupils, and um, and just like uh, just gibbering and hollering and flailing around, and then you can you can pull away. But give me a sanity roll. Holy shit! I'm sanity. You're going up. Or no, I'm risking sanity. I got a three. Oh, I need to roll for my other. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're escaping because I didn't beat you. So uh, I just, I just made a really hard escape. <laughs> and and, oh. it, and and that was and your sanity roll is just from seeing that guy. So um, okay, sorry. See if you, you're you're trying to go under equal or under to a four. All right, yep. you're good. Um, do you just peel out of there? <laughs> Uh, I peel out of there and I also like crank the radio. Nice. Well, that's a thing that uh, happened. Obviously, trying to like whip the guy off of my hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he kind of, of his own volition, he'll kind of like bounce off or whatever, you know, and then you can kind of peel out. So, where do you guys go? Where do you, where's, what's next? Frank and Benny both have cars, but Frank, where do you drive to? Um, I think drive straight into town and um, 
just kind of sit in the car parked outside of, I don't know, a diner or something and just breathe. <laughs> and just try that. <laughs> <laughs> um, at some point in time, I was just expecting the questions to come pouring in, but um, the whole way, Ali's been like, what the fuck? What'd you see? Hold on. Make sure Benny's back there. What the fuck? You know, the whole way, just kind of like Benny being very aggressive about it. Too. Uh, yeah, I think so. Frank said he slowed down like just a little bit. Yeah. yeah so I think that as I round the corner, I like whiz past him. Like, <laughs> I am not slowing down. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> like, wait, is Benny back there? <laughs> <laughs> and for him, there he is. Good. <laughs> Um, awesome. So you guys are, well, so let's say you just kind of go up to the parking lot of the double Q <laughs> a few hours early. Um, you're, you're, yeah. So Ali, sorry, you're having a scene with Frank. So. Uh, I was, um, just, yeah. Yeah. Listen, I mean, I don't think there's anything we can do. We should just, you know, walk away with whatever little we have intact the fuck are you talking about no you're real away. attached to your friend you know? i am not walking away from this i what the hell did you see that you like want to just bail now hell you live here if you something's how, going around you, do you think you're gonna avoid it oh i i'm gonna find work elsewhere norway maybe Jesper can give me a, a reference. Uh, Benny, you can be on scene too. Maybe you guys are just out, like out in front of your cars or whatever in the parking lot. Yeah, I think I like I pull up and I just sort of get out of my car, and I am just like leaning on the hood, silent. Benny, you okay? Frank here is talking about bailing. You're not going to ditch out on me, are you? Uh, Benny. Benny, you okay? Frank, you, you, you see what I saw, Frank? Yeah. Would someone tell me what the hell they saw instead of just talking past me? Okay, you remember so that dog? I, I imagine we've been like sitting on the, the hood of the car or something side by side, maybe. So mm -hmm. I, I stand up and face you and kind of not point at you, but kind of uh, like placate you almost with my hand. Listen, you don't want to know unless you really do. Did I just not fucking scream at you for the last right, half Allie, hour? Allie, okay. You remember that dog that we saw? Yeah. But a person, all right? Wait, what? You're saying what? You heard the, me. You're saying that girl, you saw a person Sandra. that looked like the dog. Yeah, no hair. White as a sheet. Oh. But they were alive? Teeth gone, no nails, nothing. And you just left that person back there? Someone who it sounds like they're torturing animals, people, and you just left them and Cassandra might be back there? And what about Sylvia and and and, and Okay, and A, don't Jamie, you dare throw that I mean, in my face. B, I, we needed to regroup and figure something out, but I wasn't about to stand there. Who knows what was going on? Two shots got fired. Two shots. Who knows if those bikers were on their fucking way? All right, well, okay. I'll, I'll give you that because this is all fucking weird and crazy and stupid and shouldn't be happening, but I, I will 100% agree with you that those bikers – are dangerous by the way out of character that is something benny came up with right now because he's ashamed that he left that person back there <laughs> he 100 percent did not care or think about the bikers so frank are you really just ditching out on this i think at that point well, um i think norma will poke her head out the restaurant door because she's still working and she'll say you guys are really anxious to get to this party, huh? <laughs> no, no, we're not going to your fucking party. Hey, hey, you don't need to use that can language. We, can we talk to you real quick, Norma? 
uh, yeah, hold, hold on, let me make sure everything's okay in here. She takes a second and she comes out taking, you know, taking her, her little apron off her poodle skirt or whatever. She's like, what's, what's wrong? You all look like you've seen a ghost. What's the name Mormo mean to you? Mormo made into the moon. Um, uh, nothing. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. How about goddess of the night? Is that like an album or something? Like a heavy metal thing? It was, was it her that, that, that said that they were calling? Okay. Don't fuck with us right now, Norma. She's like, you guys need to calm down. Like, what, what did I do to you? Why are you guys being so blah? What's wrong? No, you didn't do anything to us, Norma. These guys are freaked out. They saw something really scary out in the woods. Well, it's Mercy Falls. I mean, the woods. Yeah, yeah well, I... 100% believe that now. But damn it. I mean, okay. So, Nylene, and like this has to stay between us, right? You told us about the bikers. I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to talk about the bikers to anyone else. Yeah. So, yeah, right, sure. we went yeah. out to where those trees are dying, to where that, like, I don't know, building is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's actually Black pretty building. close to where we hang out. Oh, right. Shocking. Well, so there is like this dog up on the ridge, you know, where it looks down into that kind of valley area there. Mm. The dog, all its hair was shaved off. It was all white. Its oh teeth God. were all missing. No nails. And her reactions seem genuine. She seems genuinely shocked by all this. It was one of the creepiest things I've ever seen. Norma, do you ever black out at these parties? Do you ever get a little too crazy and just kind of lose some time? She's like, well, I mean, yeah, that's happened a couple times, I guess, but I'm not very good at holding my liquor and, you know, all that kind of stuff just goes straight to my head. But you've never been heard at these parties no no god goodness no gosh it's nothing it's nothing like that i mean they you know these bikers they have a reputation for being rowdy but no 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 they've never touched me or anything like that no, no but that's why she hasn't heard the name mormo she's been blacked out every time sorry for freaking out any norma it, it you didn't deserve that we're just rattled right now yeah i can tell i can tell look uh, if you don't want to come to the party, that's that's fine. It's no big deal. I'm a little creeped out myself now. I may not go, but um... can can I convince you not to go, Norma? I I really need you not to go until we figure this out. Um. Yeah. 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 I'll just tell, I'll just tell I'll just tell the guys if I see them. I'll call I'll call them. I'll call up the bar and just say I'm not going to make it out tonight. It's no big deal. Okay. And she, she's like, "Well, I got to go back in," and she goes back in. Okay. So tonight. The time that she was going to go to the party, I want to be here, and I want to watch her. Not not because I don't trust her, but because I think that those bikers, uh, man, I don't know what's going on here, but they're clearly a cult, and she's if she's the maiden of the moon, she's important to them, and I don't think they're going to be okay with her not coming to the party. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Some, I mean, this is all completely fucked up. Although I gotta say. That building, that doesn't look like anything. A biker gang, the nail, yeah, that looks like a sure. place the biker gang would be involved in. There's, I mean, the hell's with that building. Weren't you, Frank, weren't you talking up there when we were looking down on that about trying to find out who owned that property? Yeah. Are you at least yeah. willing to do that? For us, I'll, just, I'll tell you at the outset, Frank. Um, just because I'm not super interested in, in a title tracing scene, um, yeah. I will tell you though that like a, a couple of quick phone calls, maybe to Jesper or whatever, will tell you that um, it's an absentee landlord. Like they just own tons of land, and you know it just sits, you know, on whatever. There's absentee, so. so owned by someone, but not in the picture. Yeah. Listen, I'll I, I, I know I was all in for this, bringing up to the woods and all, but I can't see any way to to do anything that isn't like really stupid and suicidal. I 
if you um, if you I'm, see a good way to figure out what's going on and find your friend then great but do you at least agree with me that those bikers might not be okay with norma not coming to the party uh, are, you, are you willing to make I mean, sure that I, I can safe? i can definitely see your line of reasoning and if they come from norma what are we going to do um we can we can just have our cars ready make sure she gets out of here safe sure yeah okay okay sure yeah i don't want anyone else but damn it how do i know that cassandra and jamie and sylvia and who knows who else in this last while we have a couple hours right why don't we go to the cops we have more than we did before we have a, a location i mean we can send them specifically to where we were sure yeah even if the um, rest of them blow us off that andy guy he'll go you bat your eyelashes he'll trust you <laughs> so sheriff's department yep um i think as soon as you get there i think andy will be coming out you know he's got to go on like patrol or whatever whatever deputies do and he's like oh hey ali hey andy um say can we just talk to you for a quick second before you go out on patrol um sure, yeah what's up well so you know, there's that area where all the trees are dying and it's getting bigger and Right, right. Bigger. We're supposed to be talking about that, but yeah. Well, we need to talk about it, Andy. I'm sorry. Uh, but the three of us went out there and, like, we found this this dog and, like, all its hair had been shaved off and its nails had been removed and its teeth what? were gone That's, and its what? pupils were, like, missing in its eyes and and... It was the weirdest thing and frank and benny here say that you know that that new building that's out there in the middle of all that that black cube like building they say a guy came running out of that it was just like the dog super pale white no hair no teeth benny saw that person uh, give me up a roll. close I want to see if he, because he's getting a little nervous as you talk about the building, especially. Yep. And I'm going to risk my sanity die because <laughs> pushing it, pushing we're in the home stretch here. <laughs> Oops, I need to clear that out first. <laughs> Two. Not a great result, but you're good on the sanity die. He just kind of like, he just says, Allie, listen, you stay away from that building, okay? Don't go near it. Whatever you do, stay away. What do you know about it? He's like, I know enough not to go down there, all right? It's just the three of you, listen to me. With my authority as a deputized officer of the county sheriff's department, just don't go down there, all right? Frank, do you understand me? None of you. Don't go down there. What the hell are you doing about it? Don't you even care about Cassandra or Jamie or Sylvia? Don't worry about it. Don't tell. Go, Don't go back worry to about it. Don't tell us how to do our jobs. And I got to go on patrol. And he like. Well, I'm not sure you're doing your job. Damn it. And he just like gets in the he gets in the car and just gets ready to drive away. Yeah. Look at these two. Like, fuck. Kind of was afraid that would happen. And Andy is, you know, the Fort Wright honest guy who can be on our side, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to go on the table and find out what you're each thinking, find out what you might be thinking about doing um, as we kind of head into our final scenes here. Benny, what do you think? I, at this point, I I'm sort of with Frank on the idea that I'm not looking to find Sylvia. I'm looking to find out what happened to Sylvia. Uh, and I want to make sure that that... 
I mean, at this point, I'm even kind of written Cassandra and Jamie off as a lost, but I want to make sure that we keep Norma the fuck away from these bikers. So I'm just focused on the plan of going there and making sure she's okay. Okay. What about you, uh, Allie? What are you thinking? Uh, Allie's going to lie to these guys and say she's all in on the protect Norma plan. And she's going to take her shitty little Ford crappy car and drive it out by the nail a couple roads past it between it and where that warehouse is. And she's going to be waiting this evening for them to go by to their party. And she wants to either follow them or if they don't show us, she'll go ahead to the warehouse. Mm. And what about you, Frank? I think Frank kind of knows that he hadn't convinced Ali. I mean, he's barely convinced himself <laughs> not to dig deeper. Um, and I think um, Benny has kind of thrown him a life boy that he can grab onto, you know, something that would allow him to look himself in the mirror in the morning, you know, let's prevent Norma from getting caught up in this and, and then call it a day kind of thing. Um, uh, maybe, maybe not quite as extreme as look for a job elsewhere, but <laughs> along those lines. So I think so he's going gonna... to, so as she explained earlier, um, just to be clear, she'll, she'll finish her shift and then go back home for a couple hours. To, and then, uh, so you'll be kind of staking out her house basically. Okay. Um, as far as Norma goes. And Ali, you said you're just going to go over to the ridge, right? Like you're just going to go over right. to the warehouse. But I'm like totally lying to these guys. So the way I picture, the way I split off is I'm like, hey, I'm going to go get us some sandwiches from the double Q, make sure that no one's seen Norma head off. And I'll be back in just a bit. And that's when I'm going to split off uh, from them. Hmm. Awesome. Um, let's talk about Norma's house. This is Betty and Frank. She's there. Um, she was supposed to be picking you guys up at the, uh, like the original plan was she was going to pick you up at the parking lot, but now she said she's not going. And so she's just like in her house, right? Like watching TV or doing whatever she's doing. And sun goes down. It. Uh, it gets dark. The moon is pretty high in the sky. And um, and eventually, Norma's front door will open. And you'll see her, like, step really slowly out onto her porch. You just kind of see her in silhouette, though. Maybe just a little bit in the moonlight. Um, she's changed into, like, a pair of like denim, like a denim pants and denim jacket, right? Big, big 80s hair. What do you guys do? Does she look like, <clears throat> does she have like makeup on and like she look like she might be ready to go to a party or? It's hard to tell in the light, but she will like, she steps down the porch and it's really like slow and methodical. Like, like she's considering each step down the porch till she gets to the bottom side walk. And then she carefully like walks, you know, almost like a, like in a trance, like no movements of her hands, not looking around, just like straight ahead, you know, walking out to the sidewalk, uh, out to the road. Um, she lives like in a, we'll say she, she has like a little house that's kind of like one of the only few houses that are like near, like near the drag, the main area of town. Um, she steps out onto the sidewalk, doesn't seem to notice you all, um, pivots, like, like really distinctly like pivots to like turn in a certain direction and begins walking. Uh, <laughs> Frank, she look weird to you? Definitely. So we're going to see if we can stop her. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could just like slowly saddle the car up to her. She's just walking like at a normal pace. Yeah. Um, somewhat maybe a somewhat slow pace but you know. yeah so i guess initially it's pull the car up and you have it idling or at least going really slowly and call at her hey, see if you get a response she turns uh she stops she turns 
She looks at the two of you, her head cocked to the side. There's like no recognition in her eyes. It's just like a blank, no recognition or anything. Like she's just considering you, like, what are you? Who are you? Mormo? And she smiles and says, the black galley leaves tonight. Setting sail for the stars to the dark side of the moon. Okay. You want to ride? And then she like turns and just continues walking down the sidewalk. Shit. Hey, Mor Mormo, I, I, I like get out of the car. I'm assuming we'll say Frank's driving if that's okay. I like get out of the car and I'm like, hey, Mormo, uh, what's, where's this, uh, what's with the black galley? Is it, what's, go what's going on? And she turns, looks at you and she says, we are all voyagers in the ink black night sailing to the dreamlands where we will float and be free. How do you respond? <laughs> uh, do you know if- It's uh, at this point you might hear the low rumble of motorcycles fuck, up ahead. Fuck, 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 fuck. Mormo, you will get there so much faster if we give you a ride. You want to get in the car? I open the door and I like, I don't shove her or anything, but I put my hand on her shoulder and kind of give like a little guiding push towards the door. Um, she will not. Uh, she will. She will say, "No, no, no. I travel on moonbeams, on motes, motes of light. I am walking even now in the silvery expanse." And then she just like pulls herself away, you know, unless you're just like physically trying to restrain her and continue no. walking. I think this is the point where I'm going to kind of look at Frank and just be like, where the fuck is Allie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, ben, can, can we like forego the whole yeah, get the car. just get her into the oh, car? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll shove her in the backseat and, uh, if I can. I mean, um, I'll try. Yeah, you can grab her. You can, you, she, she won't resist too much, and you can kind of just throw her back in there. Um, at this point, though, you will see the the, lead, the headlamps of the motorcycles like coming in your direction, um, like the, and, the, and the rumble of, of, of a number of you know bikes, uh, a phalanx coming at you. Frank, what do you do? Um, so, is there a turn we can make before we get to them, or are we kind of stuck in a? One way. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Maybe look down an alley or something, but yeah. Yeah, so basically, I'm, I guess, classic drive casual, but not too casual. I'm trying to avoid them. If they're not, if they don't know what we're up to, they might miss us. Yeah, uh, give me a roll. I'm going to roll against you. Okay, let's clear these. I, uh, yeah, I'll just take the one die. Four. Not bad. Yes. Yeah, two, so uh, mine's a two, so you're good. Um, yeah, you'll escape. Uh, you want to just describe how you kind of get away from them? Yeah, so I, I guess I take a turn as 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 um, quickly as I can, um, and if it's an alley, maybe I wait for them to drive by and then pull back out onto the main road. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe I'm I'm tr I'm thinking, is there a hospital or something like that in in the yeah, area? Sure. Yeah. We bring her there. Um, yeah, we'll get, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I'm going to cut over to Allie. Allie, you just went down to the warehouse, right? And you've been kind of waiting around, trying to figure out, like, you know, to see the bikers, see what you can see. Yep. The bikers don't ever show up. Um, you've been waiting a while. The bikers don't ever show up. There's yep. no, there's no like light for, in the distance. Yep, so anywhere you see from the party. Allie. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah Allie kind of like slaps the dash or a steering wheel and is like, shit. And you see her reach over her seat and grab a big mag light. And um, she twists it on and she's like shining it between a couple fingers on her hand. So it's not super bright, but it's enough so she can see as she's going down the slope. Mm -hmm. And she's got like hiking boots and a jean jacket and everything on. Uh, and she's 
trying to make her way carefully down to that darker darkness where that black building is down yeah, in the depression. Yeah. You, um, you get there. Um, the building is, uh, it's about the size of a, you know, about the size of a warehouse, maybe like two stories, right? And as you're flashing the flashlight around, like it appears to have no seams. Like it's just a black, like seamless, long rectangle. Um, there's no, like we mentioned earlier, there's no tracks. There's no like earth dug up, nothing like that. Um, but you do see what appears to be a door of sorts. It's really more like, it looks like a bunch of, like a bunch of rubber tubes hanging down like a curtain. What do you do? Allie will come along the building, trailing her hand along the wall, her left hand and her right hand. She's got the mag light just full on light now, shining up and down those tubes. Mm -hmm. She'll kind of reach him with the mag light and part them and try to work yeah. in from the outside. It appears to be a you know hallway, whatever, room, space. See Allie take a big deep breath and kind of let it out it's a hiss between her teeth and shrug her shoulders to kind of try to relieve some of the tension and then you can see her visibly kind of steal herself and then just she pushes through those curtains and begins shining the light around keeping her left hand always touching a wall you shine the light around in what appears to be a large open corridor and in this large open corridor, there are people seemingly hung from hooks, um, shaved white uh, men and women. Um, they, they gibber and mutter as you make your way through them, roll insanity. one you're good and it appears to be um several dozen at least um hanging it on two levels on hooks right um i assume you're looking for cassandra yeah that she's like kind of muttering under her breath holy shit holy shit and shining the light on each one and maybe even the first tentatively she'll like touch someone's ankle to try to rotate him to get a look at the face yeah. And finally, after just a minute or maybe less than a minute, probably seemed like forever to her. She's like, Cassandra, Cassandra. Give me a roll. Anybody want to roll against? I'm thinking about rolling against. I'm going to risk my insanity because like, I'm like actively interacting with these. Oh. That's it. So I got a six on my insanity die. Uh, what was your? Uh, I was um, at five. Okay, and I got a two, so I didn't beat you. So you're 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 gonna find her. Um, Yay. <laughs> when you find Cassandra, she is, uh, well, let's just say you see her half submerged in a tank of liquid um her her hair is she's bald and you see her head bobbing up and it's definitely her right i mean there's there's something about her about her the face structure you know her eyes still seem fairly normal but she's in this liquid and like and just like muttering like in pain right and there's some sort of like strange device like a harness type device that's holding her down in the liquid and she's just muttering like like uh, 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 lower lip trembling roll and sending did you uh, did you want uh you were still at five right no, I can't hear you, Kevin. 
Uh, I went to six when I missed that earlier roll. Oh, uh, well, you, you have to roll the sanity die again to see if you hit. Oh, okay. Five. So yeah, yeah. That, that's a four. So I'm under. I was at five. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So you're 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 you're, you're still you're still keeping it together. Um, <clears throat> what do you do? Um, I'm like, oh my god, Cassandra, I, I, I'm here, I'm here, and I'm gonna. And she like snaps out of it and she says, "Ali, run, run, run." No, you got to come with me. And then she like. She doesn't sound like she can move her head very well, but she looks distinctly to the right down like a long, there's like a long dark passage kind of jutting off to the side. And she's like, you've got to, you've got to go. You've got to go. And you'll okay. hear like heavy thudding footsteps. I'm going to cut back to the other group. <clears throat> Norma just appears to be in kind of a haze. Like she's, you know, she's in a trance. She doesn't really know what's going on. Um, she keeps muttering things about the moon and the black galley and the voyage and all this other stuff, right? Just a bunch of nonsense. Um, you get to a hospital. What do you guys do with her? I think we're trying to have someone see her and maybe commit her. Like she's out of her, out of her mind. You hear the little uh, boop, boop, boop. of like a police vehicle pulling up behind you. Frank, you, you get her inside. I'll talk to the Is police. This... Okay. okay, sure. Uh, so I'll, the sheriff uh, gets out of the police vehicle. You've got you know you've got you've got her. You can be kind of moving her and taking her in. The sheriff gets out, Benny. Um, he, you know he's a sheriff because of his badge, I guess, and he's an older guy. Um, you don't know his name, but he's but he's like <clears throat> he's like. Um, Norma was reported missing, uh, and I, I, uh, someone told me that you, uh, that you guys had picked her up, and we were gonna, we're, we'll take care of it. You're just gonna go grab her, and um, I'll take her back to her family. It, it's all right. Uh, I think she probably needs to see a doctor. Man, she's she's out of it. She's in a trance. She's Son, partying. we'll take care of that. She's Let me just make it really clear bikers. here. This is not a request. This is this is me, the sheriff, telling you to please go get her now bring her here to me uh look she's in with frank why don't you just go tell frank frank's a townie he he knows you just go tell him all right you stay right here all right and he goes inside so what i do is i get in frank's car and i hightail it to the woods <laughs> you're leaving frank there frank you're there um You've got you've got Norma acting weird, and there's a nurse like you know, kind of you know, you're talk, chit chatting with her or whatever, and you see the sheriff come in. And he's like, he's like Frank McAllister, right? I, I, I'll take this. I'll, I'll take her back to her mother. It's it's all it's all it's okay. Don't worry about this. Uh, well, sheriff, I mean, I'm really worried about Norma's um, mental state. I think. Um, I think we should let the professionals take care of us, to be honest. He's like, well, you know what? Um, I This is not really a, this is not a suggestion or a request. I was just trying to be polite. Um, Norma, honey, you're going to come with me, all right? And Norma says some nonsense about the moon. <laughs> and Because, um, and... Sheriff, I, I don't really think you're, um, well, let's put it like this. It's really surprising that you're taking a sudden interest in missing persons. He's like, what are you trying to say, Frank? I'm trying to say you're sitting on a load of missing person re re reports. And we're dealing Mine, with it my friends, in our way. We're dealing with it. In your own special way. We are definitely dealing with it. You know? Running you up for re-election, Sheriff. Frank, let's not get into all this. Now, come on. Um, look, let me take Norma. Let me take her back home. We can talk about this. We'll go grab a coffee. It'll be fine. How about we wait and see a doctor? And he like puts his hand on his gun, like in a threatening manner. Like that's not an option. What do you do? Why is that not an option? He says, "All right, Frank, I'm I'm done here. I'm like." And he kind of looks at the nurse and says, "Nurse, she is not going to be going with you." And he steps forward and says, "Frank, I'm I'm putting you under arrest. I'm sorry, man." And he goes to like arrest you. What do you do? Um, you're going to arrest me for. 
being an asshole? Sure. There's only <laughs> room in this. There's only room in this town for one of you. Is that us? He's like, "Yep. Uh, if you got a problem with me arresting you right now, Frank," and he's going to like put you in cuffs. He's like, "You can call the ACLU tomorrow morning," and he's getting ready to arrest you. You can. What did you resist? What do you do? Uh, no, but as he turns me around to cuff me, I'm I'm looking at the nurse, and you better get Norma to see a doctor right away. She's a danger to herself. Um, and uh, the nurse, I think the nurse will like kind of see how serious you are, and um, a doctor will come, and and the sheriff as he's kind of dragging you away is like, don't worry. He's like, I'll be right back. I'll be right back, Norma. And he's like taking you to the to the sheriff's car. That's when you see that your own car is gone. <laughs> and he gets <laughs> it out of there. <laughs> oh, there's no I in team, huh? There's it, dude. <laughs> Allie, you hear this heavy thump, these heavy like thudding footsteps like in, from this side corridor approaching. What do you do? And I put Cassandra's, my hand. Cassandra's just urging you to run. run yeah, I run. put my hand on her shoulder really quick, give it a squeeze, and go, I love you. I'll be back. I whisper it. I don't really shout it. And I turn and start running I'm along gonna, the corridor to, to try to, to, to get leave. out. Yeah, okay. I'm trying to leave. Because uh, now wanna, I'm wanna like, roll. I've yeah. seen this. I can tell someone if I have to, I'll call the feds. I want to roll. Let's do it. I'm All right, I'm going to risk my sanity again. There's no chance you'll want to. You got a five? Okay. Let's see. And there was a four up already. So, so I got a four on my sanity die. And what'd you? You had a five? I had a five. Yeah. Okay. And then, so that one is mine. So you beat you, me. You get to re roll if you risk your sanity. So. Ah, okay. I'm going to clear these so I can actually see. Okay. Yeah. And you can re-roll all of them. Yep, I'm going to do it. You might just be triggering a ton of sanity rolls. <laughs> Good times. All right, five. All right. Um, how many, and, you, and one sanity roll. Give me that roll first. I want to see how that goes. Three made it. Right. Um, I think just the general horror of the situation is where that comes from of seeing oh, yeah. people hung up and Cassandra and all this other business. As you're running, you hear like you're not looking back, but you do hear like this dum, 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 like fast, right? Faster and faster, like behind you. And um, and a sort of like strange, like kind of like a strange, like whistling hissing sound right behind you like like kind of a um, and this thump, thump, thump. do you turn around and see what's chasing you or do you just keep booking it i can't hear you no i i scream at this point and i actually put on a burst of total terror speed mm -hmm. and maybe even wet my pants because the body's like anything to lighten the load so you can move faster and i am just running for that curtain of tubes or whatever yeah. the hell it is as you burst out this might be right around the time like in time when like you might see like benny were you driving towards the, the warehouse yeah yep okay um you'll see <laughs> you'll see in the darkness in the headlights you'll see um uh, Ali booking it toward you. Um, once Ali gets there, you guys just gonna run. Uh, yeah, yeah. total look of terror on my face. Go, any just like go, go, go. I That's book good. it. Um, let's go to epilogues. We'll take a quick break and come back and we'll epilogue for the characters. Just we can see your character at any point in the future, okay.
All right, Chris, are you there? Yep. All right, cool. So epilogues, uh, we can see the characters at any point in the future. Um, take your present sanity and uh, insanity in, in mind. You're not completely broken, but none of you, but some of you are pretty, pretty, pretty high up there. Um, whoever wants to go first. I'll go. So get a montage with Pink Floyd's Run Like Hell playing in the background getting louder and you see Allie just shoving all of her clothes or the core of clothes into a big old duffel bag heading out of town see her oh, Columbia Missouri J school graduates and so uh, see her go through a series of small towns doing reporting to actually get a decent gig and then we cut back to like 2017 and you see her driving up in a Subaru into uh, Eagle Ridge to the Democrat leader. And she's like, hey, here you need a regional reporter. Hmm. So that's and Eagle Ridge is a nearby town, just to be clear. Everybody. Yep. Um, awesome. That's great. We see you made a career out of it. I love it. Um, who wants to go next? Um, so would I be correct in assuming that if we were to go back the next day, that the black galley is gone? Yeah, it will have floated away. Uh, in the night. So I think that after sort of the immediate after, after making sure that Allie got to safety and checking back in on Frank and assumedly he didn't get held for too long. Um, I apologize for stealing the car. And then it sort of cuts to like me. I drive back home, I gather up like some important possessions and I go back up and uh, uh, start, I, I jump through the hoops to end up renting Sylvia's house and living there. Um, I live in like one of the, like the guest bedroom and I leave the house almost entirely untouched and I go sort of a conspiracy theorist. Um, I pick up odd jobs where I can, but I spend most of my time trying to track any thing, any cult that sounds even remotely like this. Um, and I think that it, it's kind of just a montage of me running into dead ends, uh, trying to track down different cults. And I, I sort of just become obsessed with it. Nice. What about Frank? Sorry, my mouse was acting up there. Um, so Frank, I think, um, stays in town, strangely enough. He he starts to look for another job, but the economy ain't so great, and finding something quick is, is um, difficult. And then he just kind of slowly um, goes back to his own life. Uh, doing the same old things, but something is not quite right. Um, the the loggers tell stories about seeing him up in the hills uh, late at night, you know, when you shouldn't be. Um, he's really unnerved by um, normal things like spilled milk or when if someone starts getting a nosebleed or something, really freaked out, like not quite catatonic, but, you know, kind of walks away out of a situation as soon as he sees something like that. No one really knows what's going on with him. In terms of work, he's perfect, um, but kind of lives sing single alone uh, for for the foreseeable future in, in the small town. Um, so that's that's Frank's story, I think. Do uh, Would Frank be up for just like, grabbing coffee every week or so and we just kind of don't talk about anything and yeah i think not talking about anything that'd be great that would almost be like it never happened right you meet someone yeah. uh, we, don't talk about it. Right? we don't even like talk about our jobs <laughs> yeah, yeah. or anything we, we just like get together have coffee and maybe a dinner or something like that 
and just like small talk about weather and then go back to our lives. Up, oh, and then we need an epilogue, epilogue where one night you guys are having dinner and all of a sudden Allie pulls a chair out or sits down in the booth next to you, lays down her little recorder or notepad and, hey guys, so what's been going on in town? Nice. <laughs> good. Um, yeah, it's really good. I, I, I can't get on Discord today because uh, I have to be somewhere uh, in a little while, but um, so we can debrief now if you guys want. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh. definitely. Sure. Um, I loved it. I thought it was really good. Uh, super fun. Uh, how'd you guys think it went? I think it went great once we got the ball rolling. It was a little yeah. like who's going to take the lead at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we did that, I thought we had really good character interactions. Yeah. And I thought the story was really compelling. And I liked that I had a great hook. I could just have my character yeah. grab hold of and just get dragged forward by it and make things happen. I was definitely into it. I got hooked into the story and I think that I think we had a good dynamic among us. Like I think that it felt to me like um, Benny was like halfway between Frank and Allie. Like Allie was all heart and emotion and Frank was all stern logic and Benny was kind of trying to ride that line. Um, and I think that for the most part the ball rolling in the beginning. I don't know if you guys, I, it sounds like at least a couple of you know each other, but you know, I don't know you, I don't know you guys at all. So it takes a minute to get that familiarity going. But once that happens, you know, I, I felt super comfortable. You guys were, you know, welcoming and stuff. So I, I really enjoyed the interactions a lot. The character interactions I thought were really good. And I, I love the story too, by the way. I mean, I was super into it. I wanted to know what was going on. I was, I, I still want to know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, uh, we, well, we'll, I'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, I'll give Donna a chance to if there's any feedback. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed it, and I thought, um, you know, from having so little at the start, just a name and an occupation, you know, we uh, we understand things about our characters so quickly. I think when we're forced to make really awkward decisions about what we're going to do, um, and yeah, I think. Initially, I wasn't playing it like that, but then I think after the first kind of, oh, I'm going to ignore that really bad thing that's just happened in front of my eyes, that would give me a really clear path on how Frank was going to try to deal with the situation was, that was unfolding. So, yeah, it was... Um, but then, it, you know, as a player, you you can't just do that, right? you got to give yourself a reason to right, do yeah, this. Keep going, right, and, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a... The solution was to just leave town, right? <laughs> that was the answer. Um, well, yeah. this is for sure the most, the single most rules light game I have ever played. And I was a little bit, I wasn't worried because I, it was a one shot and it's new people. So I was like, this will be a fun experience. But it just so much, every time we wanted to do something, I didn't have to look to see if I had the skill. I didn't have to look to see if my backgrounds permitted it. I didn't have to look to see, oh, is this something I, it was just decide, I know who Benny is. I'm the only one who know Benny. Would he do this? Yes, done. I didn't have to check anything ever. And it was wonderful. Yeah, and, and and even though it's a rules like game, there is there is actually like a really interesting thing going on mechanically, right? Like yeah. even oh, though yeah. your characters can't really lose, like you're always kind of pushing forward. Um, insanity is always going up, right? Like it's the constant drumbeat of like you know of of like what's at stake, you know. And so um, <clears throat> I think it works out great. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Like there's I love rules like games for that reason, basically. Like I like to kind of stay in character, stay in the fiction, and just occasionally drop out to 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 arbitrate things with dice, right? Like when we have to do that. But <clears throat> for the most part, um yeah. Um I, I I like that in Cthulhu Dark you're able to just keep the story forward and forward and forward without too much friction. So Yeah, and everyone um, did a great yeah. job of staying in character and one of the things that makes that so easy jason is how you never go kevin what are you going to do you always Allie or yeah, Benny. Right, yeah i mean yeah. that that makes it so much easier to uh even though i might be looking up songs from 1989 trying to figure out what Allie <laughs> has playing on the radio i'm like i'm still Allie. Right. you know yeah, as soon as you say benny what do you do i snap into benny i'm not crazy yeah. yeah yeah and that's something that uh, like 
hijacked from from I never thought about that until Dungeon World that I've hijacked into every game I've ever run or played. Yeah, it's a PPTA. That. It's a PPTA thing for sure. It, it's, yeah, so it's, a, it, yeah. it's necessary. It should have been in every role playing book from the beginning. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, the story. So, what was going on? Um, the you you guys could have you guys could have approached this in different ways, right? And depending on how you approached it, you would have gotten like a different view or a different perspective on the story. But basically, like th- there was basically two kind of tracks you could have taken. You could have taken the go investigate the black warehouse on your own, which is what you guys basically did, um, or you could have gone the like biker the biker way, right? And dealt with all their stuff, right? Um, the bikers were werewolves. Uh, they were a, they were biker werewolves. I knew and, it had to be. And um, they, they believed that Norma was this reincarnation of this moon goddess Mormo, which is a Cthulhu deity thing. Um, they believed that Norma was Mormo. And basically they would, they would have her at these parties and she would like hold forth and give dispensations and guests at the parties would get like kind of drawn forth um, by, by Norma uh, and Norma would, Norma would, would leave the party with them and take them down to the, down to the, uh, to the, to the, to the black uh, building, the, the, the black alley. Um, the black alley was uh, a space vessel of a moon beast. Um, a moon beast is a Cthulhu monster. You can look it up. Um, but basically, the moon beasts uh, in Lovecraftian lore, they, 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 they. I mean, they're like they're just they they trade in bodies. They like just snatch people up and sell them, right? And they often make deals with locals. And that was what was going on with the sheriff. Um, the sheriff was like legit, like getting paid by by the moon beast or like or, or like you know operatives that the moon beast was controlling, right? And so, yeah, people are getting snatched up. Um, the, the, not all those people were from Mercy Falls. They were, like, from the surrounding areas, too. And, uh, yeah, so that was what that was all about. Uh, but basically, yeah, towards the end there, though, like, Norma was going to join them on the Black Alley and be the last of the victims, and it was going to fly off, and that was going to be that. Um, the bikers don't actually know what's going on in the Black Building. The bikers were a separate thing. Um, who thought that Norma had this power, but that was actually coming from the Moon Beast. So, the Moon Beast was using Norma to, to like, um, you know, to, to 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 lure these bikers basically. And the biker werewolves were then like snatching people. Essentially, they snatched them when they couldn't like convince them to come to the party. So, so we saved um, Norma. Uh, I, I, well, was that you did uh, actually? Yes, uh, you did being. save Norma. You did save Norma because she's actually like an NPC in Mercy Falls, uh, the Monster Hearts Mercy Falls, and so um, uh, so yeah, she's alive and well. Um, nice. So Norma's all good, um, and yeah, we don't see her until she's like much older because this took this took place like 25, 26 years before mm-hmm. before Monster Hearts Mercy Falls, but. Um, yeah. So, but that was the basic story. That was kind of the basics of what was going on. Uh, the bleeding, um, particularly the menstrual bleeding, was all like related to the moon. Yeah. Um, that was sort of our moon theme. The werewolves were part of the moon theme. Uh, the moon beast, obviously, is part of the moon <laughs> theme. Um, and if you look up the moon beast on, on Wikipedia or whatever, like it was behaving in a way that like conforms really closely to what the mythos fiction is, which is they would travel in their black galleys. And I made mine more of a spaceship than an actual literal sh- black ship, right? Um, they would travel in their black galleys to various lands and they would make deals with the locals and trade people and goods um, and take them and they'd take them to the dark side of the moon the, into the dreamlands. So that's the idea there. I um, haven't read much of the dreamland stuff. I really want to. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously you guys, your perspective on it is not that like sort of, you know, cosmic Sure, mer- sure mercantilism or whatever right like oh, right. your character's perspective is just like straight up horror right like just like black horror going on so um which i like i like that i like the idea of like you guys what we don't really know what they're up to right like it's like kind of an unknowable yeah. like mysterious well when thing. when the migo attack a small town the people of that town aren't aware that the migo are this space-faring intelligent species that are highly technologically advanced and have a whole civilization. They're just like, Oh shit, we're being murdered by insects. Like, <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was really fun. Yeah, um, that'll uh, last. Uh, Very much. I'm going to stop this.